Hello, you are very welcome to the Overlap Rugby Podcast. I'm Shane, that's Dara. Hello. This is episode number 96, and yeah, we are discussing all things rugby through the lens of Leinster in Ireland, as we always do. Yeah, we're delighted to be back. Um, obviously, we did have a couple of kind of dips, dipping our toes in, I guess. We did a live stream uh, with the with the squad announcement for the Lions, but obviously now this is the week that... Uh, it's kind of it's it's returned, you know. International rugby has returned, so we, we kind of take ourselves off off the ice and come back to uh, to preview some of that juicy stuff that's all coming up over the next few weeks. Yeah, truly, yeah. it's um, it's yeah, it's a pleasure pleasure to be back. I've been really looking forward to this Lions tour, as I believe so have we all. It's yeah. it's probably not going to be quite the same without the fans and all the fanfare that comes with it. Um, but listen, it's going to be it's going to be very very exciting to see the Springboks back in action. The World Champions and a Lions tour is always brilliant. They've picked a great squad. They've got a good team. We've got a really good game this weekend between the Lions and Japan in front of some fans in Murrayfield, which should yeah. whet the appetite nicely. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, it's just it's a joy to be back, I and mean, we will be with you guys um, all through the Lions tour. We're going to try and do well, we're going to do one a week, and we'll do our best to, to work our way around the midweek games, etc. Yeah. So that we always have sort of up to date uh, commentary on the games as well. And, and in the main, we're just looking forward to the matches because uh, yeah, it's going to be a great tour. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as it is with this show, obviously we haven't seen any matches yet, so we're we're going to be kind of. Having an interesting kind of catch up and preview kind of show, we're going to start as we as we kind of alluded to by previewing that big game against Japan, uh, the Lions v Japan in Murrayfield. We're going to just take a look on how both sides are going to look to approach it, as well as discussing some of the squads and stuff. And um, then we're going to stick with international rugby and pivot to the Rugby Europe Championship. Uh, we're going to make mention of the Netherlands, who won their playoff game with Belgium in the meantime, uh, and then preview their game against Georgia uh, this weekend. And we'll also briefly mention the under 20s Six Nations, which got underway at the Cardiff Arms Park uh, last weekend. And uh, just a few of the other kind of uh, internationals going on. There are a couple of other under 20s games as well. Um, and then we'll just kind of look ahead to some of the other fixtures that are coming up alongside this Lions tour because there are a few really good yes, uh, summer games ser- as well. Serious, serious um, month, month of games coming up, including a, a series between Australia and France, which, uh, yeah, if people are sleeping on that, that's a great series yeah, between really the two, good. arguably the two most exciting young teams in world rugby at the yeah, moment. So, absolutely. yeah, that, that, that's going to be a lot of fun as well. And we'll, we'll touch on that, but look ahead to it more, obviously, in the weeks to come. Um, we're also going to move on and, and discuss club footy because there's, there's a lot that we've missed since we've last been there. The trophies yeah. have been flying this way and that. That's right. Yeah. Uh, we're going to look ahead, obviously, briefly to the two big finals. This Premiership Rugby and, and, and the Top Couture's finals are happening this weekend. Um, you know, And then the domestic season will at last be wrapped up. Uh, it's getting later and later every year now. I know yeah. it was exceptional circumstances, but it seems that uh, the month of June has been swallowed up by club footy. Yeah. And the months for uh, rest periods... <laughs> Well, I don't know if there's much at all in terms of the Northern Hemisphere calendar. Anyway, there's 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 very little. It's it's, it's just it's, rolling yeah. seasons rolling into each other. August through July. Yeah, that's that's, that's the where it's season. Been. Now. Some of those Premiership um, ads have just been non-stop since the start of COVID as well. So yeah, no, it's yeah. been an intensive year uh, yeah. for all these rugby lads. But we're grateful for it because we've seen some great rugby. <laughs> we have seen some great rugby, <laughs> and it is all coming to a close. We're also going to touch on that. Obviously, that fantastic game between the Benetton and the Bulls and the Rainbow Cup. Yeah, we're gonna um. Look out! Look back on the the Japanese season, which is won by the Wild Knights. We're also going to look back on 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 the uh, Slar in, in in South America, and we'll also touch on uh, the MLR as well. Yeah, which which obviously um, it's the only is still one, it's still not going to be finished as of this weekend. That'll still be going yeah, on so into, a, into July. A calendar of its own, really. The 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 MLR calendar, but uh, that's gone going as well. So we'll 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 touch on all of the club footy. Yeah, and uh, as well as that, we'll make mention of our uh, our Irish sevens boys who we're very proud of. They just qualified for the Olympics, so we're going to. Yeah, do them justice towards the end of the show we're going to include that in our rugby news of the week segment that we will uh, conclude the show with as well just giving you uh, a li- little bit of the headlines that are that are making uh Making news in rugby, yeah, yeah. rugby spheres this week, and we have uh, our our finalised twelve Olympic teams for the sevens as well. And so, yeah, the next couple of months are big ones for rugby. You know, you got the Lions Tour and the Olympics coming up. It's fantastic stuff for for, for rugby fans out there. And yeah, some big occasions for teams as well. So we'll, we'll, we'll touch on all of that stuff. Um, but I guess without without more ado, we're going to start. Uh, with the main story of the week and the main match of the week, which yeah. is this uh, Saturday's game between the Lions and Japan. Yeah, 
Absolutely, it's uh, yeah, it's an interesting, interesting matchup. It's uh, what, what are they calling? It's the eighteen eighty eight cup, I believe. Uh, yeah, you can't maybe. imagine that the Lions played Japan in eighteen eighty eight. No, but, but maybe they did. Maybe they did. <laughs> but uh, that's that's what we're branding it as. I only realised that as as I was looking up this. But it's going to be Saturday, obviously twenty sixth of June, uh, Murray Field, as we all know, and kick off is three o'clock local times. So, um, Nice and handy afternoon game on Saturday. Just a nice headline event. Um, yeah. yeah, it's definitely a curiosity because just what a game. The last time we saw the Cherry Blossoms, they were in flying fo- flying form in their home World Cup and just falling short to the eventual world cl- champions in South Africa. And now they have a chance to kind of kind of lock horns with South Africa's next opponents themselves. It's just a curious little uh, little triangle yeah, there. And, a, and another another mystery box for, for, for Warren Gatland to open up his good since the other yeah. test team he's playing also hasn't played a game in two years so yeah. <laughs> there's, there's not a lot of tape to work with apart from back in that World Cup um, but the game itself should just be a great occasion it's it's not a it's not a, an everyday occurrence when the Lions play at home I think the last time they did was um, I think it was 2005 against Argentina was the last time mm. they played they played a home game yeah um, that's exciting it's also exciting obviously in the context of COVID times there are going to be some fans I think 16 and a half thousand are going to get into to Murray Field and doubtless will make a good atmosphere of it yeah um, so yeah it's it's, it's definitely a definitely an exciting game and definitely going to be a big occasion um, but from both teams point of view there's 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 a wee bit of stakes as well it's a, it's an interesting fixture for the Lions you know they're preparing for a match with a Springbok side that is like it wins games through physicality, mm. through pressure defense, through malls set to piece. penalties to lineouts to malls kind of things. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a slow pace but physical and pressure based game. Mm. And then Japan are really the polar opposite, yeah, almost the um, antithesis of that. High tempo, yeah. lots of lots of ball in play, lots of skills, lots of keep the ball alive, as Raj would say, KBA instincts and some really good distributors. About yeah, there line well. line picking and attacking instincts and making line breaks count and winning the game with offense kind of what Japan is about and therefore it's 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 a different prospect than playing the Springboks entirely and now it is a it is a pre-season kind of game as if you're Warren Gatland but it is the first of just six games he has to prepare for the test match yeah slightly so, abbreviated schedule that they're operating with so yeah it'll be very important for just seeing what combinations work or how he yeah. wants to play styles of play how do you try and implement a style of play when you're getting players from yeah. four different uh, nations together that's the big challenge with uh, with this Lions thing yeah getting uh, getting the combinations going is going to be very interesting It's gonna be, there's a lot of mixing and matching and seeing what works but it does have to be done quickly and it does have to be done on the fly so one of the main things that I'm going to be on the lookout for anyway across these warm-up games in advance of the test series is just little indications as to how the Lions might approach the test series tactically. Sure. None of this stuff is going to be definitive, but I definitely think that there's there's scope to just to, to getting an idea for what Gatland is thinking about the test series, how he's looking to approach it. There'll be a few hints here and there. Yeah. And there's there's kind of this this dichotomy playing in my head of kind of two distinct tactical directions that the Lions can go about beating the Springboks because obviously we're going to talk about the Springboks in great length as the as the test series approaches yeah but I think that there's like there's definitely a, a couple of distinctive ways of beating them there's like two different models which I might call like the Wales model mm-hmm. and the New Zealand model right and what I mean by that I think is I want well the first one would be the Wales model how Gatlin might look to do do it and nearly did it in the World Cup mm-hmm. has to do with looking at where the Springboks get their points from this Springbok team under under Razi Erasmus and and Jack Niemnaber um and in terms of like how do they how do they win games is by accruing points like any rugby team where do those points come from if you're looking at the Springbok team it's all about sort of pressure it's a yeah. pressure game it's about pressure on defense pressure in the contact area through physicality scrums, aerial pressure scrums malls line yep. outs, set pieces in general yeah de- de- defense uh physical the contact area the breakdown the set piece just putting putting your team under pressure in all of those areas and using that to generate points be it through penalties and then territory or then also ultimately tries i mean they they generate as many tries from their defense as they do from their offense really yep. this spring mock team yeah and um so in terms of they're not like a razzle dazzle team they're not going to play with that sort of flowy tempo and so if you're a, a coach and you're looking at that team and you're saying well how do i negate that how do i prevent them from getting points against us in that way i think the way that that gatlin looked at it um during the world cup and the way that they might look at it this time around is simply take those pressure po- points away lock down the scrum lock down the set piece that's going to be vital no matter what game plan you're looking to implement yeah 
but then also just like not al- not allowing their defense to put pressure on you by not getting them in- letting them into the game. Yeah. Like I get, and it might be the case that if you're going down this route, Gatlin's ideal game doesn't involve Lacanio Am at all. Yeah. Like he doesn't feature from a defensive read point of view. Because, because what the ball are you doing? has already been kicked. Because the ball has already been kicked. You're gonna That's take... what we saw in the World Cup semi final. It is a hell of a lot of kicking. It um, is. But it makes sense. Like yeah. it, it, it's it's a powerful argument when you're looking at where the Springboks points coming from, the amount the serious pressure that they put on you from a defensive point of view. If you, you can just say to yourself, listen, if we front up in the contact, if we can lock down the set piece mm-hmm. and then don't let their defense into the way. Deal with the high field bombs. Don't let their defense in, and then just kick smarter and better mm-hmm. than the than the spring box. Um, Faf in the box kicking jewel. Well, indeed, yeah. The, the 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 argument against it is that you end up playing a game very similar to how the spring box play. Yeah. You know, you you your game. The winning of the game it comes down to who edges that set piece battle yes. and who edges those little contact areas and those little moments in the territory battle and who gives away the fewest penalties. And all those small dynamics. Yeah. Um, but it's a it's a powerful argument because if you do it right, you take away what the box are so good at. You don't let them get the defensive pressure on you. You don't yeah. let them force errors and exploit them in yeah. that way. Yeah, because if you can stay composed, there then they are rockable as well. When they're when they're frustrated, yeah. they can be the ones to to give those penalties away, and you can edge it that way. That definitely makes a lot of sense. Um, definitely, I've, the neutrals and the rugby purists are going no. Yeah, well, indeed, because you you can see the writing on the wall for such an ugly game. Whereas the all black model is yeah. a bit more more razzle dazzle and it involves multiple distributors and trying to just puncture through yeah. them. Well indeed <laughs> the, the the powerful argument for the other way of approaching the game it is is that it breaks up what the box are trying to do. I mean in some in so, to some extent it makes sense to take away their defense to kick a lot to play composed Wales model will try and edge the small battles. But on the other hand, you're not you're never taking the Springbox out of their comfort zone when you're playing that yeah. way. You're playing a Springbox style game out in South Africa, yeah. with which their is, tempo. Yeah, yeah, which is is dangerous. It is. Whereas if if you if you can employ the sort of model that the All Blacks have, which obviously the All Blacks have had mixed success against the Springbox, not perfect by any stretch. But if you look mm-hmm. at how they beat them in the World Cup, it was simply by changing that game, by making the game different, making it about other things, yeah. getting outside of that blitz defense, breaking that defense and then punishing it once you find your men in space your talented outside backs punishing it with scores being relentless once you've broken that line until you get a try yeah. and then scoring in, in, in just quicker uh, in quicker yeah. time being, being than, quicker, than the Springboks with a quicker team than the Springboks is definitely a recipe for success especially if they're a little bit lethargic and a little bit sluggish then uh, yeah you can definitely blitz Safa teams and, and they struggle to, mm. to accrue points rapidly to, to come back so that's definitely what, what we'd love to see is, is, a, is a, an ambition to play that way just purely because of the calibre of the players that they have there like definitely you feed into a bit of both one doesn't preclude the other necessarily like you do empower your halfbacks to yeah. kick some of the ball. You do want to try and take Latanyo mm. out of the ball, out of the game. But you also want a capacity to inject tempo and and, yeah. and seize tries. So they're probably the ideal is a blend of both that has a very composed yeah. team that can also spring into life and use all of its weapons. Because ultimately, mm. you do have you're selecting the best players from four nations. You have almost an onus upon yourself to try and play the best rugby that you can yeah. um, but then yeah whatever the picture is presented to them like like mm. if things like that if they're trying to play an ambitious old black model but then the scrum's not being locked down or something like that it'll all fall like yeah. a house of cards very quickly if things like the set piece like the basics yeah. are not up to snuff and I don't think that the set piece even comes into the tactical question I think you need, you it, need both. it anyway. Yeah. and I don't think even necessarily systems come into it I mean in, you're, you're going to need to have as you say the capacity to work the ball through phases you're going to need your multi-phase pod in your first place starter moves no matter what you're doing Mm -hmm. but I definitely think there's a tactical distinction between one and the other between kicking most of the ball in in your half and in the midfield uh, playing conservative not allowing that box defense to generate points because it's easy to say you know listen get get, get thin on the ball and whip it wide Mm -hmm. but like you know when when you watch that box defense at its very best and you've got like Peter Steff and Lacanio Am and Makazoli Mapumpe 
shooting out of the line, making good reads, but also just coming up so hard and so aggressive, yeah. often in a space of about 20, 25 yeah. metres. And then when they finally um, get you, the hit is tough and physical. Yeah, and um, sometimes it yields like an intercept try. You look at Colby's try in the World yeah. Cup final when they spilled the ball and they, they caught them on the counter. Yeah. Like that defence generates points for them. And if you're going to be trying to mix it with them and getting outside of them, there's as much chance of you conceding a score as making one. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's definitely it like it's it's I think I think it's I think it's it's not without risk as much as admirable as it is. Um, but it's definitely it's a, like there's an interesting conversation to be had about like can, if you can get outside it. I remember the All Blacks in that first game being pummeled by the Springboks in a very Springboky kind of game for 20 minutes, and they had the six nil lead. And then I think it was just a crossfield kick from Richie Moonga yeah, um, that opened, them up, that opened them up. They finally got outside them, and then the All Blacks had the class and the ability to find the score. Then, yeah. um, from that one singular line break, they didn't take the foot off the neck until they'd scored. And if I think, like you look at Bree Samet, you look at Hogg, you look at Liam Williams, you look at Duhan van der Merve, yeah. the, the Lions have the capacity to be that team to yeah. find the space and then be relentless. But there's inherent risk in doing it, and True. I definitely think, you know, when you're you, you, you like you can talk about playing into the box hands by playing a slow game, but sometimes you can play into the hands of that defense by trying to play quick, especially yeah. at altitude. That's yeah. not your conditions. So I think I think there's like a serious conversation has to be had about how they approach sort of that first test, and that's not to say that they're they're going to lean. 100% into one way or another I think you need the ability to do both I think, you do but I, but I think at the same time one is going to be a plan A and one is going to be a plan B and I think you're going to get mm-hmm. an indication from these warm up games as to which they're leaning into yeah absolutely and I think it, like it's it's interesting that way just looking at uh, just the recent records of some of the, the teams that na- make up the Lions versus the Springboks the one with the out and out worst uh, like Scotland obviously struggle with them as well but give them a right rattle England are the ones who really can't deal with what Saffords mm-hmm. are bringing at all because England like to bully teams physically yeah. but also like to play with an offensive tempo a zip to their to their yeah. kind of ball, ball in hand stuff that once it's disrupted they look very rudderless yeah. whereas both Wales and Ireland are pretty comfortable in a slow kicking game and mm. so are South Africa so you see quite a lot of test matches between those yeah. nations that just go three pointer for three pointer tit for tat like the World Cup semi-final and then it just ends up being one or two clutch moments that decide the fixture um, it's interesting because the, 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 the Lions don't necessarily play like the sum of their parts at all but there's mm. different kind of different uh, seeds of evidence in that, that core group for how to play against the Springbok team and find some success, but then yeah, as you say, there's the wildly indica- different squads you could choose depending this on is which it, way and you want to go. They only have you know? a small number of games, starting with this Japan fixture, to try and find themselves. Yeah. And the thing about this Japan matchup that they have obviously this weekend is, with Japan being so associated with uh, running the ball basically and being quick, high tempo, mm. it's almost inevitable that the Lions will be the slower but more physical team I would think just Probably, looking yeah. on paper at the two the two matchups it's it's likely that the Lions will try and be the team applying the squeeze at set piece the team trying to get a cohesive rolling maul the team yeah. trying to launch from those kinds of set piece and, and with, with the selection of actually Aki and Henshaw in the centres for them as well yeah. it's, it's going to be a shut down kind of let's try and try yeah. and be physical and stop their rhythm and attack them at the nuts and bolts which while making perfect sense on paper for uh, a play a game against Japan with the context of only a few games to warm up for the mm. Springboks will that inform if they're just used to playing that way will yeah. that inform how they go into the test series yeah I mean I, this is probably as good a point as any to pivot into the squads themselves yeah um, but yeah no I, I think certainly um, what you're saying what you're saying makes a lot of sense that looking at this Lions team that it is it's it's the whales at, at, like this is just the Japan game but it, it seems to be leaning into that whales mold of how to beat the Springboks as opposed to that All Blacks mode hmm. and uh, yeah so the team that actually is going to take the field this week is um, Rory Sutherland at loose head Ken Owens at hooker uh, Xander at tight head uh, Henderson and Alan Wynne jones in the locks um, Ty Byrne at 6 Hamish Watson was picked at 7 but actually has a picked, picked up, up a concussion in yeah. training which is uh, interesting that's okay for um, him because like, for it's a, as we say it's only a short turnaround and if it's in any way dodgy you may be yeah, no, very ter- unlucky ter- it's not a good timing it's, it's terrible timing and yeah. yeah you'd wonder what they're like obviously accidents happen but you would wonder what, what's going on in training certainly the little bits of footage that have come out there seem to be intense yeah. I've been watching a lot more <laughs> strength and conditioning than I have ball play from the lines. 
so far, <laughs> and it remains to be seen how uh, how effective that proves. So anyway, uh, J- Justin Tipper comes in, not a bad replacement, mm. um, to bring in at seven. Jack Conan's at eight, an extremely mobile back row, as mobile as they can select. Yeah. Uh, Connor Murray is at nine, Dan Bigger at ten, Bundiaki twelve, Henshaw thirteen, and then the back three of Duhan, Van der Merve, Josh Adams, and Liam Williams. Um, it's first. Team. It's yeah. the first Lions team of 2021, and it's a good one. And the first Lions team to not include an English player since 1950. Wow. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. There you go. That's that's uh, an impressive stat. It was going to be the first one to not have a Welsh back rower in quite a while. But yes. then, then the Mish obviously got, got that knock, and in comes Tipperick. But Tipperick is a very, very able replacement. Yes, well, indeed. It's a bloody good team. It's, it uh, is. It, it, on they're, paper, they're, it looks formidable. There are some English on the bench as well. Jamie George is covering Hooker. Wynne Jones and Tyg Furlong covering Prop, not bad impact. Courtney mm. Laws covering Locke. Uh, Falato covering the back row. Ali Price covering Scrum Half. Farrell, Owen Farrell covering 10. And Anthony Watson covering the backs the as back well. Three. Yeah, so plenty of English on that bench to sort of yeah. even out the stats there. Yeah, kind um, of similar to how I was hypothetically picking. I was jilting all the jilted Englishmen to come off the bench <laughs> with a bit of fire in their belly. Yeah, no, it might work. It's <laughs> interesting, isn't it? Like, I definitely think that back row excites me. Yeah. Um, but then there's there's like there's a juxtaposition in terms of what I'm saying between you know the, the loosey goosey kind of play because I think that back row is really much more suited towards. The All Black way of playing yeah, the All Blacks. They're linked men. Tyg burn yeah. out wide and Conan a little wider, and then some backs running Tipper off them. Tipper out wide. Out wide. Like, like, yeah. they're, they're all rangy and yeah. ball players, so it's uh, dangerous. And yeah. and yet the centers and the front row is much more sort of well. Actually, Ken owns a bit of a ball player as well, but the but the the, the center certainly is much more defense oriented. Yeah. And I'll definitely I'll just be looking at you. There's only so much you can extrapolate from the squads themselves, but I'll definitely just be watching to see. Is the emphasis of this Lions team on getting getting set defensively, getting our rhythms and combinations together defensively, and in terms yeah. of kick the kick chase, chase yeah. all of those important things, are we going to be just looking to exert pressure on the Japanese and then building from there? Or are they going to be deliberately working in some offense? Because yeah. so far... It would be nice to see them launch off like midfield lineouts, you know, because there's so yeah. much scope for attacking teams with that, of, of that set piece. And one of the, my least favorite habits of, to be honest, not mo- many teams, but it's Ireland more more generally is like setting setting up a truck and a, hitting it up in the midfield and then box kicking it to the twenty two yeah. as if even if you gather it from the twenty two with no set piece, that's not as dangerous as a first phase yeah. strike move from your own ten meter line. No, like indeed, if, if but, well drilled and well executed. Yeah, but it's um, all about how they want to play those test matches, and it's definitely yeah, I'll, I'll definitely watch with keen interest. Which and I definitely think it's it, it adds intrigue to these games as well. Just. How are they looking to approach it? As well as who's playing well and who's not, Which because is a big actually, factor like, too, because you can play yourself yeah. in and out of jerseys with this short, short you can, amount of time. You can yeah. to some extent, but I think the game plan and how how tactically the Lions are looking to approach this test series is going to inform selection as much yeah. as anything else. And so it's easy to say, you know, uh, Tipperick is a better player than whoever than Hamish Watson or than Sam Simmons. But it it just might be that the way they want to play the Lions makes a lot more sense to have Simmons in for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I definitely think that that's like it, it's the game plan is as is as interesting to watch as individual form. Yeah. Um, but there is a there is, there is another factor to this game as well as just all the Lions intrigue and that is Japan, Japan which is um, fascinating unknown quantity at the moment. Tier we, one team is this their first game as I an think official it is their first official, tier official one game team. as a tier one team? Yeah, yeah, and well deserved. They they've yeah. kind of been chalking up the merits. Obviously, big scalps in in most recently Ireland and Scotland, but South Africa the few years prior. So they've been building for quite a while and the top league and the standard of the top league has been increasing as well steadily over the last few years the marquee signings obviously following Bowden Barrett coming in there there's a lot of money and infrastructure in Japanese rugby and it makes all the sense in the world that they've been given tier one status and they have a, a few exciting games this is the first of, of their summer tour but they're playing Ireland as well aren't they and I, I, think, they so, and yeah. I think they and might be playing the US at some I think, point. No, I think they're playing England England Japan. as well they might, yeah, yeah. they might be anyway I'll have to double check that but certainly over the coming, coming weeks they have a couple of other games yeah um ireland certainly um and yeah to jamie joseph gets to put a squad together and, and go tour for the first time since the world cup yeah um and it is it's a, it's, a, it's a huge massive opportunity this is another big match for them if they were to somehow pull off a win um then you know that it would it would potentially rival uh, in terms of scale 
uh, what what they did in in the last two World Cups, pulling yeah. off those those scalps. It would it would be monumental of them to do that. And there certainly are no mugs. You we one thing we know about Japan is they have quality across the board. Yeah. Um, Joseph has named his squad. There are a few key sort of differences well, uh, in terms of the team that we remember from the World Cup uh, what a, and what a team that it was. There are a few key men missing in terms of well, well the, this one screaming at me is Kenki Fukuoka. Yeah. Um, who the, the lightning winger Doctor Doctor Kenki, um, Luke Thompson as well, stalwart in the pack. A few of those pack show to Hori as well, uh, missing to Nagari. Uh, Nagari from Nagari. Nine, who started um, more, more or less every game in that whole World Cup cycle, it seemed to be about Nagari, yeah. and they just deemed him not uh, not fit to play this time out, and so they're brand new at scrum half. Yeah, Tanaka is not um, there either, so it is brand new scrum halves as well. That said, uh, the, the the core of that squad has been kept together. Jimeno is in the squad. I'm not sure about his availability for this week, given he's was just played in the Super Rugby final the other week. Yeah, um, Inagaki still there. Faces. Um, Labish- Labishania Michael Leach is still captain that you whole tomorrow. back row is, is very good you Tamora is still there that class centre partnership of Nakamura and Lafaelli awesome um, yeah. Matsushima is still around from Clermont so they'd like the core of that team minus a couple of uh, heads is still there yeah. um, and then also they, they're fresh with a load of young talent as well which is, is, is doubtless exciting Absolutely. to hear Jamie Joseph talking about it like he himself doesn't know what to expect to some degree but we know they have quality. We do know they have um, absolute quality, and and no, no less than Jamie Joseph as well. There's no no mug at all. I'd expect a very few set, coach, a few yeah. set piece strike plays to for sure, um, yeah. and just a general kind of tempo and drive to to be accurate. That like at, at their worst, they're a little inaccurate. Japan, when you see them yeah. fail, it's not for the lack of trying. It's just sometimes the execution lets them down when they're just not yeah. quite sharp. But when things click, they are looking for for killer passes and incisive lines. So they, there's there's yeah. a chance if this the Lions team are a little bit off and a little bit out of sync yeah. that they can be sliced open by a very accurate Japan attack. No question. And did Japan like it, it's hard to know how seamlessly they'll slot back into their 2019 selves. But if they like they're up against a Lions team who are at equal parts disjointed and have that weight of expectation playing a home game. You know, there's there's this ego thing with the Lions as well, where they're convinced they they should win all of these games. They're picked for that reason, mm-hmm. and yet we we routinely see in in these warm up games the Lions get rattled in yeah. advance of the series. We see them lose games. You sometimes see them get disjointed. You see yeah. different fifteens not quite work. You see combinations yeah. not quite gel. So and there's yeah. scope there's scope to put doubts in minds if Japan can start quick. I think there's a couple of key factors both on offense and defense. Obviously, if they can test the sort of well how how just how uh, you know robust. Joint, robust and joined together that defensive partnership is in the midfield obviously Aki and Henshaw have played together loads I of think, times I think the selection um, is based on that kind of co- they yeah. want a bit of cohesion in that area specifically because it's danger yeah. you know that from a Lions point of view that's yeah, Lafayette was picking past that more were, no mug either you know yeah, that, well um, it's just his distribution was so otherworldly yeah. in the world cup he was finding excellent excellent offloads and the guys are outside him are so dangerous so yeah it's a big test for and that uh, matchup for is guys. fun between him and henshaw on the 13 channel because henshaw's um, been defending like a demon all season as well yeah. so you have that cancelling it the last time we saw like the, the matchup that that failed the last game we saw japan in was v the spring box and it was and similar it was, yeah it was similar Arm. it was an, a, an offensive mind against a defensive mind and it was um it, the whole game just went the Springbok way and it started from, from tighter than that but that was just one of the areas Lafayette did get a pass outside got a him and got a, him a few course, nice yeah, ones yeah. still because their high quality players will get moments against each other but the biggest point of concern I would say from that last game for Japan was just that big rolling mall that the Springboks were able to mm. affect that they didn't quite have either the Savvy or the Techers to sack before yes. it went 50 metres and to the try line yeah, because yeah. you know you just got to hold it down if you can't stop it and the Lions will look to attack them there so that piece will be key when you have yeah, but Henderson, Alan Wynne Jones, and Byrne. You know, it's, like it's definite quality. But yeah. they're not they're not too many out and out mauling forwards in there. I wouldn't say no. like Itojo classifies a mauling expert. But like even that back row, uh, like they're not they don't they're, none of them love to maul. I don't think that's that's what I any of them. Have I'd say for. those two rows, Henderson and uh, and Alan Alan Wynne Jones are pretty yeah, well, pretty uh, maul aficionados. It's it's not. within the remit of the second row to be that way. But mm. but on, from an offensive point of view, like it it does take some doing to do a maul like that. Yeah. I think defensively, the, the 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 jackal is what was so powerful for him at the World Cup. Or yeah. Inagaki getting big steals. Jimeno obviously yeah, getting loads. Jimeno, it's fresh um, off Super Rugby campaign. 
Spain as well. So if, yeah, if, if, if they can catch the Lions just not supporting on, on one or two carries and get a couple of key jackal steals and just cause them to tighten up, cause them to commit that extra man to the breakdown and just slow everything down, they will likely turn them into sort of a kicking team and the Lions will lean on to, you know, okay, let's not overplay here. Let's put pressure on them and defend and kick the ball. Yeah. Murray and, and, and Bigger and will that certainly steal the that likes chip. of Matsushima to come running back at That's you. That's it, yeah, you exactly. Know? They um, want the Lions re- receding into their shell and, and altering their game plan and just feeling a little bit unsure of themselves. A couple of key jackal steals here and there. Yeah. And then if Lafayette can get the better of Henshaw in a key moment and they can get to the outside and then just be clinical once they're there, which I don't doubt that they'll be able to do. I think, you know, if you give them a three on two, they'll, they'll score. They'll take it. Yeah, 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 yeah. and that's, that's, the, that's the joy of this. And then, so it's it's a game that isn't without uh, intrigue and isn't without alarm if you're the Lions. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, with all that, I guess, is there anything else to preview? Have you anything else on mind or do you want to say how you think it's going to go? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 like obviously we're looking in the main on, on from, from the tactical point of view from the Lions but I definitely just think it'll be interesting to see if they if they try and blit from a defensive point of view if they try and blitz that Japanese um, attack you know that that wide wide attack the defensive shape of the Lions is going to be very interesting yeah, to see it, are they going to push are they pushing off and drifting back are they shooting up and yeah, shutting the door it's brand new um, it's a brand you, new system as so, you say yeah. it's, it's these are the, the games that will get the little indicators the little clues as to how they will approach the test series when it comes up as well but uh, yeah, sleep not on Japan because they could catch you napping. <laughs> yeah, I definitely um, think it'll be a good game. I think the Japanese will be game for it. I think they'll be motivated. I don't. I think it'll be a Lions win, mm. but after, you know, after sixty minutes is only. Yeah. I think it'll be tight. Sim- similar for, to those for games, sixty minutes. Sim- similar yeah. to those games we saw Japan play in Twickenham against England, where they were yeah, like very putting similar. a very shocking like yeah. putting the cat I, amongst the pigeons for at least sixty minutes, I, and then yeah. the fitness kind of tell first game of the season factor. Um, I feel extremely yeah. confident in saying that Japan will score a lovely try. Yeah, oh, that's my prediction for the game. One lovely Japanese one lovely try, ja- at least up. one lovely the Japanese try. Result doesn't try. matter when the try is that lovely. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're they're <laughs> going to score a very good try, but I think that the Lions, with all of their quality, and yeah, just might, fitness maybe off the back of the it's not, a, it's not fitness is such an easy thing to say. I think mm-hmm. Japan, the Japanese, I think are fit, fit, but I just don't know if they're as strong as the Lions guys. The that's Lions pack is elite, and yeah. yeah, I definitely think it'll be fun to see. You know, potentially Conan and Byrne and and and. Uh, uh, Tipperick and those certainly yeah, in that second half such a ball getting playing the back row it'd be yeah. lovely to see them out wide yeah. linking getting the better um, of, of, of the Japanese out wide would be my prediction I remember seeing Conan uh, assist a couple of lovely tries against Japan yes he's um, a, I was going to say Irish he has tour, a very yeah. good he had a very good tour against them where he was just shrugging them off because he's yeah. very physical um, yeah no, there's, there's definitely scope for that uh, that to be the way it goes I, I expect the last quarter to be the Lions Um yeah, but hopefully it'll be a good spectacle up in Murrayfield for those in attendance as well. And uh, yeah, it'll just be exciting to finally kick this Lions tour off once and for all, officially have it underway. And uh, and yeah, it, what, a, what a curtain raiser for, for an obviously strange uh, tour, all these circumstances notwithstanding. It's just exciting to see like, a fixture like this. Like It's just an unusual, yeah, test, interesting fixture in test, test match. Test rugby is back and it has all the intrigue of the Lions series as well. So yeah, looking forward to this one on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, I suppose with that we will pivot on to the other international footy that is going on. Um, yes. Yeah, we just need to make mention of this that happened. We had the Rugby Europe playoff uh, in the interim since since last we were talking to you, and it was played between Belgium, who were the incumbents, and the Netherlands. And as you can see, it was the Netherlands, the orange of the Netherlands, and their very own breakdancing coach doing his <laughs> Scott Robertson impression. Uh, they won by two points. It was 23-21 at the end. So uh, the Netherlands have earned the right to join this year's Rugby Europe Championship, and congratulations to them. Yeah, massive uh, win, massive win. Always fun to see someone get a bit of a sickener for Belgium um, but yeah, yeah good to see the Dutch back I'd uh, love to see the, 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 the Dutch make a good go at the rugby um, yeah. I believe Tim Visser was, was, was giving his congratulations to them as well obviously played yes, for Scotland did. but he was an out and out Dutchman yeah, who absolutely. just happened to be flying Dutchman he was really really um, good yeah, so yeah, yeah no, excited to see a new team I always I'm, I'm fond of just the Dutch just for the sheer orange of the jerseys <laughs> it's just a good a good colour literally yeah. good colour to have on a rugby <laughs> field we don't normally have it but uh, yeah no, they, they have a lot of catching up to do because as it was this year the schedule was just a buy for all the guys as they were playing their uh, all the teams as they were going along so they actually have a load of outstanding games to, to rattle through yes uh, a busy <laughs> summer of playing all the teams in, in rugby Europe for the uh, the Netherlands yeah and it starts this week against Georgia out in Georgia yeah um, in Tel Aviv in Georgia 
Um, yeah, not Tbilisi actually. It's in what is it? The Kavkasioni Arena. In yeah, I think I saw a little bit on that. It's a it's a tiny little place out in 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 a, well, it's it's a tiny little stadium I think out in 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 sort of an out of the way part of Georgia. Right. Um. But yeah, no, the Lelos obviously are looking for the slam. This is it. Um, and more importantly, just to to push away uh, in terms of World Cup qualification and really yeah, start well, to, it, to put the as, squeeze on as far as that yeah. first place yeah, absolutely. Uh, qualification. As we were saying in, a, in our, our chat about the Rugby Europe Championship in previous episodes, it's uh, it's this season and next season that are functioning as those mm-hmm. World Cup qualifiers. Um, so yeah, it's, it's obviously Georgia, they, they need one win left and uh, with all due respect to the Netherlands, I think they will struggle out in Georgia. It's as Probably. big a step up as it can possibly be. They, their World um, Cup qualifi- cam- qualification campaign gets underway. I indeed. mean, like they, yeah, they yeah. are, and it is an open possibility for them. What if they you come know? in and, and do an, uh, do the the impossible and win in Georgia and shock everyone else in that tournament, and then you'd have those dodgy Spaniards looking looking nervous and probably and everyone probably nervous, giving away yeah. red cards against them in their games. So yeah, no, it's 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 an interesting one to see how they'll cope the fact that they they scrape through albeit final like the playoff is its own thing and there's a touch of any given Sunday to that like 23-21 v Belgium just looking on the recent records of Georgia v Belgium and just Belgium's record in general in in this comp it's uh yeah, it's hard well, to hard to imagine yeah. them having the caliber to match up well with Georgia, but it'll be a shock. It'll be as tough as it ever gets in game one, so that'll be the shock to the system. Yeah. and then they'll be able to steal themselves and and try and play, kind of build a bit of momentum yeah. and try and get a few results. It's honestly how I'd prefer it if I were the Netherlands. Let's get the tough game out of the way and let's see, let's see, see how the hard they, see what this step um, up really is. Yeah, take our lumps, take the shock, get back into training, be ready. And then hopefully catch a Russia or a Spain napping and a little bit rudderless, yeah, a little bit disjointed. The That's world is their oyster right now. But yeah, the Netherlands playing Georgia. That that game is uh, this Saturday, uh, five o'clock local time. Uh, that's two o'clock um, British Standard Time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that 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 game is also going on this weekend. There is another test game. Well, not a test game, but an but international an international game, game and um, a good matchup at it, as it is. The Mary All Blacks versus Manu Samoa. Um, interestingly, the Manu, Manu Samoa, the last time they played in Wellington was 04, so a very welcome return to Wellington for them, and that, that game was against Scotland, <laughs> um, which they lost rather badly, 38-3, but uh, yeah, no, the New Zealand uh, folk are obviously, there's a fair, great kinship there, it just seems odd that it's been that long, but it will be uh, on, in Sky Stadium in Wellington, and that's uh, this Saturday as well, and now the kickoff time last I checked was actually to be confirmed, there was a few... I'm sure there's a kickoff were, time, I, if I was to guess, I'd say 7.30pm, look. Yeah. Uh, eight eight thirty our time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that that it's obviously just going to be a fun game. It's the first of two tests between the two teams, and uh, yeah, the Maori obviously picked a a, a decent looking squad themselves, they and will go in as red hot favorites to, to demolish the Samoans. Yeah. They did. They, they absolutely will. They they've picked a fair few uh, few Highlanders fresh from their uh, Super Rugby out, or Super Rugby Trans Tasman final. Um, including three of their locks, uh, a few new caps as well from from a, a Maori All Black kind of point of view. Um, head coach Clayton McMillan named a twenty five man squad ahead of the the two tests they have with Manu Samoa in New Zealand as well. And uh, yeah, it's going to be captained by the very very lucky Ash Dixon, who uh, <laughs> despite the egregious high shot that uh, no one in New Zealand seems to think, yeah, yeah. <laughs> think warranted any further action, he will be leading out leading the uh, Mary All Blacks for his sixth straight campaign he's basically the de facto captain he is it seemingly and he never gets the crack at the All Black jersey obviously Cody Taylor and Dane Coles keeping him out of that but he is he's absolute quality and a man to be admired but that doesn't mean <laughs> that we just ignore the laws as far as attempted decapitation is concerned and uh yeah, that was um, that was a terrible tackle in the Super Rugby final, and the the Kiwi refereeing brains trust. Um, oh, and commentary. What one of the things like we yeah. we it's a side a sidebar sidebar, but uh, <laughs> the, one of the points we were talking about because we were getting very vexed looking at uh, the Pro Fourteen and more recently the Rainbow Cup because it was all domestic refs, and I thought like some of, some of the guys that we had some of the uh, were were refing appallingly, be it yeah. terrible relationship with with advantage, just blowing things up way prematurely. Uh, whistling things off for forward before you even allow the thing to develop so you can't go back 
uh, not officiating scrums or ignoring all of this kind of we, we saw a lot of that more locally and we're more admir- admiring the guys in New Zealand for their let the game play uh, they don't call crossing on everything that's the one that's really getting our yeah, goat yeah. it's just everything's crossing up here now all of a sudden when none the of it is basic screen shape um, is now crossing yeah. all the defender has to do is hit the short runner if the ball goes out the back and that's crossing yeah whereas I've um, seen I saw a Super Rugby uh, Aotearoa game early in the season that had a ref saying like oh no the ma- he, he made a bad read hit the wrong man that's not crossing yeah. I'm like great stuff that's really good instincts but the caveat is then in those trans-Tasman areas the Aussies and the New Zealanders and it goes to what they're talking about with red cards ruining games and stuff but their relationship with high shots they just they're wrong like yeah, it's yeah. the same as the Aussies ignoring the the high ta- the uh, contest in the air rule when it was coming in and they were a little late to that party where it was like all in the northern hemisphere you'd have two guys jump for a ball but one guy wouldn't compete properly the guy flips over it's a red card landed on his head you'd have guys ignoring that in australia for a couple of seasons before it finally kind of yeah. came along and now with this high shot you have the same thing, just yeah. going like ah there's now millis in it he's a he's a great yeah. bloke you know uh, we like footy so play on yeah. uh, and it's like i like the we like footy so play on but it's it's a shoulder to the head is red lads you yeah, know well, the, the, the <laughs> law the tackle law doesn't make any mention of malice or intent or any of that stuff yeah. i mean that can factor into a potential ban like certainly if someone is, if if something is appears malicious yeah. you can all by all means you can add an extra dose to the ban but in the interest of getting concussions out of the game I don't think that uh, the shot that uh, Ash Dixon put in at the weekend can be result in anything other than a red card yeah. and it does seem that the, the post-mortem on that worldwide is pretty clear on it and yet uh, Ash Dixon gets to captain yeah, but, and yet uh, it was the like the refs agreed he agreed he said no malice and then the commentary team were like oh I think we'd all agree with it yeah, and it's yeah. like oh, I don't know about that <laughs> no, it's, it's the feel good stuff but yeah. obviously with the concussion stories on the other side you just yeah. can't have contacts like that in the game yeah well I think it's just inconsistencies have popped up all season long purely because of the isolationist mm. way that all leagues yes. have had to approach it so you've seen French refs and their tendencies in the top tours you've seen English refs and theirs in the premiership and likewise you've seen in the Super Rugby a different kind of cadence from the ref a different point of emphasis and some is good some is bad but there needs to be a a consistency to it I guess but sidebar over because that was just in regard to Ash Dixon um, but besides that it was was a bad shot but he is a great player and one of the as you say one of the most admirable guys yeah one of the best best hookers to watch in the game somehow finds his way to the trial he's always part of that Highlanders team that turns up like the performance they put in against the Crusaders uh, earlier in the year where they they managed to do one over on them they have such a great grit as a collective even though they tend to not have as many All Blacks and ultimately they came short in the final as well for similar reasons but yeah he's kind of he's Mr. Mr. Clubman and in the Maori he's Mr. Maori as yeah, well they he's take on his rages. personality they're, they're the Highlanders they're abrasive and they're tough and they're, they have clutch and they don't shy away from the big moments and the tough moments they're always they're always good. they're always there to catch you if you're sleeping yeah. and uh, yeah he's been a stalwart in the Maori as well and yet yeah, the the Mary is basically just um, the, the 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 development squad for these All Blacks. A lot of young guys, a yeah. lot of uh, fringe guys, and yeah. pr- likely guys. have far too much for Manu Samoa. Yeah, although like nevertheless, Harry it's great. great that Parkinson two... excited to see actually yeah. is the one I was going to make mention. He's Looking a great huge. great couple of seasons. Yeah, he's gotten yeah. much bigger and he's he's very robust. But similarly uh, keen to see uh, see how Manu Samoa look when they line up and how they play. And it's just one of those games that's doubtless going to be a pretty spectacle like they will both try to play some nice yeah. footy and if there's in any way decent weather it'll be a, a good old fun game yeah I hope for a close match although not necessarily expecting it although what I will say is that the if you are going to sit down and watch this match the preamble isn't to be missed because the Mary do fantastic yeah. hackers and likewise and, uh, Samoa have the, the I, I can't quite remember what it's called but they have their own uh, war dance that they do pre-match as well so there'll definitely be a bit of colour yeah. uh, to proceedings and then some fun tries afterwards so that's always a fun game that's going on yeah and um, there's a couple of other games going on this weekend as well brazil are playing against paraguay interestingly um, which yeah. is interesting just that brazil having been you know making decent strides in south american rugby a couple of years back seem to have regressed a little bit and they definitely play the slowest footy in south america yes they have, and they their, do. their club side actually lost to their paraguayan equivalent in slar so there's definitely so there's a, bit, a, of little, a little there. bit of intrigue there um, yeah and the england a and scotland a teams are playing a, a game in well for road as well that's um, two o'clock on the Saturday I think as well 2pm yeah. kick off just a, another warm up game. game a development game for, for some of the guys on the fringe as well but uh, yeah. just to keep you abreast of things that are going on and I suppose we'll with that we'll pivot into 
the summer series as well because there are a few games just to get excited for over this like with all this Lions Tour stuff coming up obviously there's there's some that are going to be overlooked South Africa v Georgia is one that's coming up that, week, uh, as yeah. a warm up for South Africa that I'm just fascinated by Got excited for Georgia to get to play them as well you'll definitely see some big big men in that one yeah, yeah. George, George, Georgia have a fun series this summer they're also playing Scotland and they like the more the more of these kind of uh, into the uh, into the frying pan kind of uh, games that they have the better it'll be for them in yeah. the long run um, also Ireland are playing taking on Japan yeah. um, This uh, most of this is happening next week as well Wales will play Canada Romania have a game against Argentina which will be their first um, game I think against a tier 1 side in I believe over a decade well, um, and outside of a World Cup that is yes. yeah, yeah. Um, and that's huge for, huge for them and they also won their battle with their government and are going to play that game at in, least, their stadium. in their new stadium um, Jeez, um, that stadium. war is ongoing no, I know, well. yeah, the that's government are crazy trying to sports annex minister yeah, trying yeah. to annex their freshly built stadium for football purposes go yeah. way out of that terrible <laughs> it's terrible yeah. to see yeah. Um, but yeah that game that game's going ahead uh, good good on Argentina going out to Romania to play yeah uh, the New, New Zealand will obviously be playing Fiji they'll also be playing Tonga uh, first off next week as well so yeah. good to see the All Blacks giving the islands some love um, absolutely much better solution than playing Italy for a few tests yes indeed yeah, no, that, I'm <laughs> glad that that got scrubbed out uh, you had also England and the USA that they have a tour of the USA yeah, which really curious with. to see how the USA look to be honest I've been watching a bit of the MLR they're it's like been, it's been I, great this season I feel yeah. like it's it's. I'm watching the game in the US advance in real time I think the Giltinis have like moved it on a level yeah they've um, introduced running rugby and yeah. incisive attacking play and, and absolutely blitzkrieged the former champs or the defending champs yeah. and just kind of moved it up yeah. a level indeed um, and in the early part of the season no one could deal and now you're starting to see more teams deal with them yeah. as they adjust on the fly and get get to understand yeah. what that next level of speed when is you, when, you, the when you saw they were quite disappointing in that the season prior to the world cup they were exciting and they had their yeah. hooker scoring a load of tries and they were physical. They, they're one of the few tier two teams that can kind of mix it on a physical level with the tier one sides. They're big enough and they have yeah. have, have a physicality that's uh, as a match for a lot of these guys. What they lack then was pace, like uh, at the World Cup especially, like their wingers were centers yeah. really. They had no speed. And when you look at what they bring to the sevens game, which is just sprinters, like out and out speed, it seems yeah. a bit crazy, a bit wild. But uh, it would be nice to see that roll on and then a bit more incisive attacking play from the US. But that's, yeah, they're facing England and good on England for, for offering to play play them in that regard as well. So that should, that should be an exciting uh, series. I think they're playing a couple of games. And then, as you said, the big one that we're excited, very excited about is Australia-France, that tour. Yeah. That's going to be so good. Two young teams, as you say, two young teams, relatively fresh coaching setups. Both of them want to play yeah. ball-in-hand, high-tempo attacking stuff. Both of them have the players and talent to do so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, this no, could people be good. Are, people are sleeping on Aussie rugby in general. Um, they're not as far off as all that. It was, yeah. they were, like, it was It was tough going in that in that Super Rugby Aotearoa, or that Super Rugby Trans-Tasman Trans competition, yeah. but that was stacked against them. And uh, It was, rather. The yeah. week after the final, like, yeah. as you were correctly pointing out, it's like, why didn't the Crusaders have to travel the week after the final? Why did yeah. the Aussie teams have no, to cross the like, Tasman Why were they first? tipping the scales to favour the better teams? It just felt annoying in that regard. And mm. Even so, they, they both the Reds and the Brumbies managed to scalp and yeah. they are two good teams and I definitely think the talent in Australia while not nearly as deep as uh, as the Kiwis across the water um, is still oh, like really really good to pick good. a really good 23 and even 33 yeah. to up to World Cup squad level of, of yeah. good you know? oh yeah it'll be fascinating yeah. some of the matchups the matchup at the scrum uh, you know, you look at Cyril Bai against Taniela Tupo. Um, I'd love to see the Wallabies get go 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 uh, down the well and get a couple of guys like Skelton in from abroad. Yeah. But even so, I think the talent that's that's in Australia makes for a very very fun series. And I don't even know if I make France favourites to go to Australia and win. I think it'll be it'll be, be tough. It'll be, fun. it'll be certainly fun. won't make them favourites in Suncorp. No, Suncorp is where the Wallabies win. win. The Wallabies win in Suncorp. <laughs> yeah. That's just the way it is. But yeah, no, three tests right across July. Both sides want to play attacking footy. Like, yeah. it don't sleep There's on potential the for this to this be, be an aesthetically way more a, better, a better look yeah. than the Lions tour. Of course even. there is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If, the two, if the Lions turn up jacked up to try and out-muscle the box, then yeah, you might be 
flicking over to, to Australia to watch some running rugby. So yeah, that's definitely an exciting yeah, uh, so list. And we will be going into that and just kind of keeping you abreast of that. Just wanted to make mention of the fact that the summer series is going to be a one to watch. Yeah. And there's in- a lot interestingly of enough, the, the Australia-France uh, tour kicks off on the 7th of July, which is a Wednesday, right. um, which is pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, Wednesday, Wednesday the 7th at 11 a.m. and then uh, Tuesday the following week at yeah. 11 a.m. as well and then Saturday of that same week finishing up so it's an interesting it's a three match tour but it's abridged and a couple of midweek games in there as well yeah. but if you have the means to watch it you absolutely should because it's going to be great absolutely and we'll try and uh, adjust our upload schedule such to not get tripped up by these midweek games but we might be tripped up by one or two so be ready for no. that you might want to ring a bell just to be notified of whenever we're, uh, we're <laughs> uploading because it could fluctuate it could of course um, but yeah, with that, I suppose we'll, we'll just leave that because we'll get into more detail with all of those as they're coming up. We're just going to mention the under 20s Six Nations, uh, which kicked off as well last weekend. Uh, the whole tournament is going to be taking place in the Cardiff Arms Park, um, which yeah. was curious to see. We were just tuning in for the Ireland game. I was like, why is this in Cardiff? And found that out. But, um, but we had the first round of fixtures. Uh, Ireland beat Scotland 38-7. to in uh, quite a one-sided game, it was a bit of a shock for for Scotland. Um, then next up, we had England v France. Le Petit Crunch uh, <laughs> was thirty-eight twenty-two to England in the end. But but France started like a house on fire with their left winger grabbing a hat trick in the first twenty minutes, and then yeah. playing all the rugby, and then England slowly bludgeoning <laughs> bludgeoning them into submission. Yes, so it was kind of a bad, it was kind of a bad guys win scenario in that game. <laughs> <laughs> Says who? <laughs> Says me. <laughs> um, but uh, and then Italy finally uh, lost to Wales twenty five eight in the first round as well. So that uh, that wraps up the opening round. Yeah. Round two's fixtures are all this Saturday, and uh, they're gonna. It's a triple header kickoff at uh, kickoffs at two five and eight. And first game is England v Scotland. Second game is Italy France, and then the final game is Wales Ireland. This yeah, weekend. and I believe you should be able to get all of those games on YouTube. They are um, being streamed live on YouTube. Which and is great. The Ireland um, game itself is being shown by RT only in Ireland. So, yeah, yeah. For, yeah. for for us, it's on. Uh, we have it on the telly, but uh, I think yeah. you should be able to get those games on YouTube if you want. There's also been a, a couple of uh, there's another um, under twenty competition taking place in South Africa with uh, four 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 teams three uh, two South American teams Australia uh, Argentina and Uruguay along with Georgia and South Africa yeah is quite a quite a force awesome. they're calling it the 2021 uh, under twenty international series yeah it's all taking place I think at the Mark Hotter Stadium in Stellenbosch yeah um, which is uh, it's 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 caught the Georgians on the hop anyway the Georgians have 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 been slaughtered by the South Africans. And now beaten by Uruguay today. Yeah, uh, huge win for Uruguay, and obviously the Georgian under twenties who have been going great in recent years, really having a tough time of it. Conversely, um, though, nice to see Uruguay. The channels yeah. are good. Uruguay after their very impressive World Cup under twenties doing well. This looks good. Yeah, and they were yeah. they were in the game against uh, South Africa for 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 a good while as well in their in their opening game. So definitely scary team. And South Africa won uh, the crunch match of that competition 33-26 Actually, this afternoon as we shoot, yeah, um, the the South Africa managed to to take that one down, yeah. and no surprises there really. Um, but yeah, I think that uh, that kind of puts a, a a full stop on all the international rugby that we know of. We've yes. tried to scour the world uh, and look at uh, <laughs> international rugby wherever it may be. Um, by all means if there are games that are going on that we don't know about let us know and we will give them the shout out something we do like giving the shout out uh, to those less less mentioned less newsworthy we we like to see what's going on in rugby all across the world and obviously international rugby is is of course our main focus I think it is the driver of rugby and I think that that is it's a great quality in rugby worth protecting uh, that that the internationals are so much better and such a stronger product than the club game yeah Uh, well I would juxtapose that with the soccer where where, you know you've got your your stalwarts your Real Madrids and your Juventuses and your Liverpools and they're bigger than your your international sides yeah. Brazil and all of these and they're actually better teams yes and well I, that's I, the thing yeah. like you're, think, you're looking at a great international team like France who won the World Cup in the in the round ball in the football yeah. uh, and you're thinking like there, that's a really good international team now they might get pumped by Liverpool but yeah, who knows, <laughs> but, you, know, you know like yeah it's exactly a, it's, it's a weird state of affairs whereas the speculating about club sides and international sides there's a general awareness that the step up to international yeah. rugby is, is what is, is what real. is real is very real and yeah. you can see it in certain 
players who excel at club level and then find the transition quite tough and then also it's just the economic driving force of the game like the, yeah. you see all those stats the amount that the men's six nations rakes in for all of those unions compared to literally every other revenue stream it's up near around 70 odd percent which plus is crazy for, yeah. most, for most yeah uh, absolutely yeah. but uh, yeah that's all that's all the test rugby going on it's great to have test rugby back we have sort of been dipped out of it since the six nations there's been those little bits going on but in the main the season is just getting started well the season in the southern hemisphere is just getting started but this little window this little test window is opening up it's a little later than it used to be that's going to be the case from now on it's going to be july instead of june and um, but yeah look really looking forward to some of these games it's going to be fun to see these teams and as much as we think uh you know that the world cup isn't too far away the dynamics are really starting to build like that australia france uh tour actually has stakes like yes. i think the winner of that tour is going to feel really really good about themselves and is going to be in a good place going forward yeah towards that world cup and the loser it'll be a definite setback yeah i'd agree with all of that um and just yeah no, i'm excited by all these matchups i love seeing the new zealand sides take on south sea islands i think it's just one of the great spectacles of color and of yeah. culture that you have in rugby as well and then obviously the Lions tour, albeit without fans, will just be an amazing spectacle and event in and of itself. So yeah, we are glad to be back previewing all this international rugby. And I suppose with that, we're going to park international footy and we're going to do a bit of housekeeping in the club game because right. we actually when last we left, there was a lot of stuff we were previewing that has since happened. So we're going to take a look now at uh, some of the club footy. Absolutely. Yes, and we're going to start by looking back at the Champions and Challenge Cup. Obviously, this was a while ago that we had, but uh, just in the last podcast that we did, it would come to my attention that we were previewing these games and we have, <laughs> have to do a bit of, bit of housekeeping. Obviously, we had the All-French final in uh, in Twickenham. Both of these finals took place in Twickenham, and it was uh, Toulouse v La Rochelle, uh, and Toulouse managed to claim their fifth star in fantastic fashion so now they are top of the log again in terms of European royalty and pedigrees concerned they've managed to get their fifth star and to cap it off Antoine Dupont was named European player of the year in the back of that as well um, so congratulations to them they, they came out 22-17 victors in the end yeah um, despite that La Rochelle had, a, had an early doors red card which definitely yeah. changed the complexion of the game and they did stay in for large periods but Toulouse ultimately found the, the, the score to take it home and, and were, were just marginally the better team they were team the better the team on the day and they deserved yeah. it and then it was a, it didn't stop there for the French though because Montpellier travelled over and claimed a big old tiger's scalp yeah. a big old silly tiger scalp that despite all the Ellis Genges and all the, the great things that are in that side they were playing a fundamentally silly game against a big strong Montpellier pack and they got Bismarck in the second half and yes, yes yeah oh god yeah they, they were I remember that they were just like they on, kept the, on running the into opposition the... try line just refusing to move the ball yeah. playing a, a Montpellier game at a Montpellier pace and losing and, and to lose, Montpellier and losing to Montpellier yeah. in the end yeah, that yeah. was that was a, 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 a tough day for Leicester it was um, yeah. they all had a bad game George Ford had a bad game yes he did um, they were just yeah they just looked a bit rudderless and directionless on the pitch and it was kind of a bamboozling sight after they were for me they were very good favourites in going into that game yeah, yeah. They, 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 they lost they still us. have a lot of good weapons and they've definitely improved this year but they'll have to ex- back. there was a step back they'll have really to examine, them, and examine yeah, yeah. themselves uh, and, and think of it because when you have a guy of the calibre of Ellis Genge and you have some of the other qualities that they do have Nadolo and all this they yeah. probably should be a little bit further along and, than they are but given where they're coming from we'll cut them some slack and congratulations to both Montpellier and to Toulouse the five star Toulouse as well yeah. For uh, yeah, as I said, reasserting their place at the top of the European pedigree list, taking that fifth ah, star, taking that fifth star. Damn, we lost the drive for five. Yes, uh, but we'll be back. Leinster fans are, are not disheartened, and uh, yeah, no, it was, it was worthy winners to be honest. Yeah, and, for the year that since twenty ten, and and the first, yeah. I think, somewhat crucially, the first bit of um, proper silverware for this young French group. I know yeah. not all. The French, the young French team are, are incorporated in this Toulouse, but uh, team, but a lot of them are, you know, yeah. Marchand and Cyril Bay, and Dupont and Entomac, obviously, um, a, like a, 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 a decent chunk of that young French team, that the spine of it, some could argue, mm-hmm. um, is in this Toulouse team, and I think it's not insignificant that they went and got European silverware, international silverware. Yeah, um, it's it's something that they the club has prided themselves on, and obviously we were making 
or I was making um, some some noises about the fact that they'd played so well in the Six Nations in moments in the last couple of years and hadn't been able to take home a trophy for it. Yeah. And yeah, I definitely think it's not insignificant that they, they got over They managed the to do that. And yeah, what yeah. a trophy it is as well. It's the, the, the biggest, the big prize in Europe. So yeah, we tip our, our hats to Toulouse. Uh, they are champions, but uh, with that we will we'll park that because that just needed to be to be addressed. Before it was a while we, ago. It was a while ago, but the ones that are upcoming this weekend, we're going to start in the Premiership. Um, but there are two finals, obviously the Tuck Tours and the Premiership. Uh, in this, we have Harlequins v Ex- Exeter at uh, at Twickenham, and really the story here is what a game we wow, were treated yeah, to. Yeah. Harlequins travelled to Ashton Gate to take on Bristol, who were favourites and were looking the best team in the comp and certainly were well favourites after the first 20 minutes when they ran in like four unresponded tor- yeah, tries and just, just looked ten over. shoulders the better team. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was crazy. It was such a crazy, crazy game. I've, like, I'd never thought uh, that Leinster's uh, overcoming of Northampton in 2011, <laughs> which I know people like to make note that I mention a lot, yes. but um, that might have been superseded because as far as the finals footy comeback... Holy yeah. moly! Yeah, they were well, it was twenty eight to nil down. The biggest uh, comeback just, in Premiership history, apparently twenty eight yeah, nil and, down, and, and then to back. do it in a knockout game yeah. away from home. Um, did you the Harlequin fans who made the trip to Ashton Gate were going to lose oh, in the they second were. half? Yeah, yeah. But what a showing! I mean, once like they obviously had uh, Bristol on the rocks, and, and some of their vulnerabilities were shown. But just the, the the sheer momentum of it, and the then the execution, some of those first phase score uh, scores, yeah. the consistently perfect passing from Marcus Smith, yeah. who Excellent. is just a joy to watch. Like what a high ceiling he has! Yeah. Like just the flat balls from the flat quick balls that were like two just two on the two money. one yeah. inch perfect. Yeah, the one that inch for Don Brandt as he sliced yeah. through the middle of the middle of the field as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, they had. Just lovely, it's lovely sequences of tries. It was a crazy game. Obviously, it finished thirty-one all at full time. Yeah. But uh, but then twenty minutes of extra time later, and two great tries, great extra time tries later as well. And Quinns were the ones going through to the final, and it's just yeah, yeah it's they, just they, an they, unbelievable out, game. Outworked uh, Bristol, shocked them, and then they didn't let them get back on top. Yeah. Like Joe Marler putting in a hundred minute shift, a hundred minute shift um, from a loose head. Crazy. You never see the like of it. Crazy. Although, and it wasn't quite. I thought it probably was. I think he was hauled off with like two minutes left yeah, on, on yeah. the thing. But the, considering the amount of extra time, either way, it was more at least hundred minutes, maybe more for, yeah. from that guy. So uh, yeah, he can't be far away if if a line goes down as well himself and Genge. There's some good scrummagers out there at loose head. Yeah, Genge in um, good form. Uh, Marler in good form. Obviously, I thought Keane Healy was super unlucky to miss out, but we haven't really seen him featuring in, in recent times. Um, but, yeah. but yeah, the 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 depth in loose head is 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 near Springbok levels yeah, in terms there, of their yeah, depth. Yeah. The guys who aren't going on the Lions it's true, it's true. Um, but yeah, that was it was a game for the ages. I was transfixed watching yeah. it on the weekend. It was without question the best game of the season, and uh, yeah. yeah, just a truly joyous performance from Quinns. And I was, it was, it was just magnificent. Yeah, well, it upset the it's it's upset the uh, the Pat Lam- It's the first real set back that I can think of this Bristol side properly having. Mm-hmm. Obviously. They, they lost a couple of times they didn't win in Europe this year they've had setbacks but this is one like it felt like it was gearing towards this was the season they were going to win the Premiership and then we're going to compete on the European having won the Challenge Cup already it felt like they were ticking yeah. boxes all the way along and they topped the and table they topped the, the log yeah, and they yeah. lost the home semi I mean that yeah. is tough pretty, to take pretty, pretty tough um, that's yeah, going yeah. to be a tough one to, to swallow for, for all those guys and, it, and they uh, did look proper good at it shell shocked yeah. and uh, yeah Charles Piatel was, was the best player on the pitch in that first half and had to go off at half time and yeah that was definitely a game changing uh, moment and then they lost Ren Radra as well uh, towards the end they and finished the game with 14 men didn't they because yeah. they were out of subs so uh, yeah it was yeah. it was not like it could have if it had gone on longer I think all that would have happened was would Quinn, more, would Quinn's Quinn's rise, yeah, more. Yeah. Um, but yeah that's an unfortunate state for, for Bristol to have been in after such a, a great season and looking so so good in this comp they get ousted yields, by the Queens yields yeah. no trophies on this occasion yeah. and uh, yeah that'll, that'll be a rough one for them but massive massive congratulations to Quinns yeah. Um, the other semi was a little more. Uh, well, it, was a, it was a good game objectively. Yeah. It was like it was forty points to thirty to yeah, Exeter. It was, it was <laughs> a bit say. more paid by numbers in terms of what I expected. It was just Exeter being just that little bit better than Sale. A little bit further along, they're very um, similar sides in terms yeah. of their defenses are actually better than the scoreline suggested. But they're they're quite hungry defensive teams and quite physical teams. But uh, Sale's offense is a 
little bit more rudimentary, a bit yeah. less sharp than than Exeter in terms of Exeter. Of just yeah, Exeter have built an offense. Built a lot. They, they're reminding me of the Exeter team that uh, that played Leinster in the first game we met in like Sailor. Sailor Sail are reminding me of that Exeter yeah. team from like maybe five years ago. That was where they were kind of similar. You could see the DNA of what they were doing, but yeah, their ball in hand was was pretty poor a lot of the time mm-hmm. and I think they, they shocked us by creating a 12-9 game that we won with no tries at all and it was just yeah you can see the physicality in Sale you can see that kind of toughness but uh, sometimes when they're repelled at set piece especially yeah. they get a little rudderless very quickly and some of their passing can be yeah, yeah, especially without without McGinty in there to run the yeah. show as well it was always going to be tough fact. it was tough for Dupree yeah, actually did yeah, not, yeah. Um, did not uh, have his best game either no, and that was pretty much all she wrote as far as their chances um, shout out to Jack Noel as well coming back in and looking brilliant Yeah, um, huge depth in Exeter and uh, yeah the final then uh, is Quinns and Exeter it is obviously Quinns home territory Twickenham yeah. um, but uh, given just given the uh, as good as that Quinns performance was and as much as I'd love to see them turn on the razzle dazzle ride that razzle dazzle um, ride that momentum wave yeah, through I just think of of Marler and Care, like these these older guys who had to play so many minutes That's on the true. weekend yeah. and I just can't like I've seen we've seen this movie so many times in a rugby sense before it's just responding to the big performance the yeah, week the after emotionally the big, charged yeah the week after game. the big performance always tends to be a rough one it, like it's very rare to see a team back it up I mean the most recent a uh, glaring example in your mind would be England at the World Cup doing the, 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 that game against the All Blacks and then the next week not being able to bring those same energy levels that's like the kind of thing that yeah I, I just I would find it after going 100 minutes I would be very surprised if, if Quinns were able to replicate that same kind of form as much as I'd love to see it I'd, yeah I, I would love are, I think they play their the picture, picture is, is pretty it's mm. probably prettier than Exeter's although Exeter do have some nice some nice rugby in them these they days do. as well they do um, yeah it, it just an interesting tidbit about it is actually um, it had been it had meant to be 20,000 fans that were available to or that were allowed in the UK have obviously kind of rolled back their, their COVID restrictions, so it's now only going to be 10,000. So the first batch of 10,000 ticket, tickets that had sold out in like 72 hours, they have now had to be refunded, Ooh, which is a kick in the teeth. How do they decide who I don't know. Out. A kick in the teeth for whoever missed out, but also the unions and stuff are, are yeah, feeling yeah. feeling unfair, Yeah, calling foul on us, saying why would be unfair? Yeah, especially when the know. plan at the moment is to have something like 60,000 in Wembley for, for the, for the uh, Euro Euros. Game. That's, yeah. that's it. That's mm. exactly the crux of it. It's <laughs> like, why is rugby be getting the short end of the stick and mm. uh, timing I guess timing I guess but, um, but uh, yeah no, that's unfortunate it means there are going to be 10,000 fewer than there were in attendance for that all French final that we were talking about a few weeks ago that was in Twickenham and um, so it's a yeah it's a bit, a bit of a bummer in that regard but for those who are in attendance uh, I'm sure it'll be a great spectacle anyway it has been a great season of Premiership Rugby regardless there have been some I'm, really cracking games go ahead and say it I mean I don't think there's any question that the highest standard of rugby this year has been played in the top tours in Europe Mm-hmm. Um, and that, and the, the Euro, teams, the Champions Cup yeah, revealed that those are the um, teams that 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 that, that uh, yeah that coped and got to the deep end of the of the Champions and Challenge Cup and won those games, but personally the Premiership is the most entertaining league. It's yeah. just they're playing lovely uh, rugby. It's being really well refereed, which makes a huge impact in terms of rugby. But the attitude, there's so many teams out there trying to run the ball. Quinns are an example. Uh, Bristol obviously topped the log this year trying to play running rugby yeah. Exeter have had to develop their game beyond just the physical yeah. and they have had to develop a running game as well Leicester are moving um, the ball better than yeah, they have they're, been they're all trying Even to run the ball teams that floundered your Gloucesters and stuff they're yeah. still paint a pretty picture when, when they try and string things together yeah. so you're saying just kick Saris out permanently and we'll have a lovely game <laughs> <laughs> Saracens no. are going to come back and, and add to this yes um, no it's, yeah, it's yeah. really exciting in that regard yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and this just as a pinnacle of it I think it's a relatively new final Quick Quins, Quins v Extra can't think of that having nope. been the final before Sight if it has any English fans down below Don't let us know so. the last time these guys met in a final in any regard but uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that goes obviously Extra defending champs Theoretically, Quinns come in as favourites, having knocked out the top seeds. Quinns don't come in as favourites. Uh, no, no. In, t- in terms of seeding, but uh, no, they don't. It's it's defending champs Exeter, who I would make the more likely, especially given that uh, that yeah. hundred minute showing. But I'm kind of my heart's with the Quinns after that that game. Yeah, I just love to watch Marcus Smith play. I'm very yeah. excited by him. I think uh, yeah, he did, England would do well to to cap him and 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 get him involved as soon as possible. And yeah, and, and yeah, it would. Uh, it's conceivable. He looks good enough that if he develops sort of the nuts and bolts of his game, 
he could overtake Farrell by the World Cup, and that's that's. Yeah. I I genuinely do believe that he looks insane. Is he very not that he's necessarily going to do that, but his ceiling looks super high. Yeah, in terms his of quality, the quality potential. of his running game is just yeah, and great. his temperament is very good yeah. as well. It's, it's, it's like yeah, he has he seems to have all the skills. Um, so it's just exciting to watch some of these young guys uh, out there mixing it at the top top level in, in club footy and that final will take place this Saturday obviously at Twickenham it's a 4.30 kick off uh, local time so it's, it's, cool. it's, it's in the mix there what time did you say the Lions game three was o'clock. 3 o'clock okay yeah. So, not great no, no if you have the old and record button yeah. it's a useful one um, why would they clash those games I, I it's, not a, it's not a total clash it'll just be the end of the Lions game and the beginning of that game but nevertheless, that doesn't make any sense. No, no, it um, doesn't. But uh, but that's when it's on anyway. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll definitely watch it because it is the pinnacle of this this English domestic camp, uh, which domestic has been season, a great, a which great has league. been good. Yeah, yeah. It has been good. And to to the victor go the spoils. Obviously, just the separate note as we were alluding to is this also happened in the meantime. <laughs> Saracens one hundred and seventeen Ealing Trailfinders fifteen over the two. Why legs. do you have to put the aggregate uh, score up? Because like I thought it was dramatic. You know, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was sixteen nil after leg one so they did better in the second leg which was their away one but uh, yeah the Saris have basically as far as the punishment is concerned they basically just chilled for this Covid year and now they're bouncing back up with yeah, nary Alex a scratch was on off them in Japan. Yeah, the guys does, who yeah. had been off sojourning in, uh, in Japan are now back still fit pumping Ealing and getting yeah. back into the Premiership so um, yeah these guys haven't gone anywhere they're going to be contenders for, for the Premiership they next season take, uh, and then they'll be contenders for Europe the year after that they did um, take a, a, um, a an early season humbling from the Cornish Pirates. They did, and good on the Cornish Pirates for dishing out that humbling to them. <laughs> the, we, were, we all took selfish glee in that. But uh, as far as the business end of their that little season, yeah, no, they had far, far, far too much for Ealing. Uh, even despite the, I think, yellow or no, red card, was it? That yeah, came for Rhodes. For, yeah. Uh, Rhodes, Michael Rhodes for tackle height we were like yeah. we only he was watched. telegraphing his own red card by yeah. just tackling everyone upright and yeah. he's always had that roads he's had that upright tackle stance to him and you just unless you're it's a sticks and in in New Zealand you just don't get away with it no it's a recipe for um, red cards and it did come but it didn't didn't matter at all and uh, <laughs> ultimately as far as penance for their sins they will still obviously miss out on Europe top flight of Europe next year um, mm. in terms of qualification they'll be straight back in the challenge straight, though, won't they? straight back in I think in that regard yeah. so yeah they'll, uh, they're back in the hunt contenders perennial contenders because they're just that good Mark McCall still at the helm so yeah if you can add to this great premiership season whoever the winner is best of luck to Quinns and Exeter they will be defending champs but then Saris will be back in the mix and it's just yeah, yeah it's, it's a great comp add yeah. to the to the class of that of, of English domestic rugby it's definitely very exciting yeah um, and with that we will pivot on to matters France as well because there's another grand final uh, the Bouclier is to be contested and it's a repeat of that Champions Cup final it is La Rochelle and Toulouse the two best teams in Europe it turns out are also the two best teams yeah, in yeah. France who knew uh, <laughs> they, they did finish one and two in the table and they've managed to hold on to that uh, through their through their uh, semi-final games and now they get to meet I think where, where is the match going on it's in uh, Stade de France it is the Stade de France that's right um, um, as is tradition and yeah it's uh, you know, like we'll just to kind of recap what happened it was Bordeaux again who Toulouse had to beat again yeah. and it, for the umpteenth time in as many months they scraped past yeah, I've, I've watched Toulouse Bordeaux. play Bordeaux three times in the last few months and they've all been just these turgid turgid mm-hmm. games Toulouse have a reputation for playing running rugby but they're not as um they're not as expansive. Well, they can be, but they're certainly this season's iteration of them is curious. I mean, if they do the double, it'll just be curious because I don't think they've been perfect. I think they've been far from it. I think they've looked beatable um, on on plenty of occasions, and they've rolled their luck on occasions. And likewise, at the weekend, they played out a sl- another slow game against Bordeaux, where both neither side really took the game by the scruff of the neck, and both made bad mistakes at times. And it sort of it came to just sort of a comical climax of just I I I can't understand how of all the games to have missed I'm I, I like I missed a few games in the last number of months but I've never missed to lose Bordeaux <laughs> no indeed and, and it, and it was came the first to, half of the yeah. season we were whinging about never seeing top tours footy and now you see three to lose Bordeaux yeah <laughs> yeah it was it hasn't been it, it's it's just a, a match made in hell it seems but it came to its its crescendo at the weekend. When Bordeaux were twenty four to eighteen down and the clock was at seventy seven minutes and they'd line out and they made a line break instantly off the line break, 
cut through and Colby went off his feet and gave away a cynical penalty and they had a kick they had, well, they had a penalty under the sticks and the clock was there was like less than three minutes left it was a six point game mm. 24 to 18 a try converted try wins it and anything they went, else doesn't yeah and they went and kicked the penalty goal to make it a three point game yeah. on the off chance that they get back up and kick another penalty goal to draw the game and bring it to extra time it was it was an unbelievable decision um, that really went beyond parody as far as as far as the sort of the religion of the three pointer goes in yeah. this game, um, but yeah, it went un from the commentators on Premier Premier Sports. It went uncommented upon. It was yes. like, Oh yeah, and I'll have a kick here to make it a three point game, mm-hmm. as opposed to what the correct way to commentate on that, which is to go, what are they doing? Yeah. Why don't they want to go to the final? I know. Why don't they, they like? Why do winning? they never like <laughs> and, beating uh, Toulouse? Why yeah, do they only they, like making they, an ugly game that they lose? Yeah, three <laughs> games in a row they have turned it into a scrap that they lost because they didn't go for it on the right moment and they are they are a team that is committed to the religion of the three-pointer Bordeaux yeah. and I won't be too harsh on Toulouse because Bordeaux do have a knack for just dragging games into the mud they do they did and, it to Bris- um, poor old Bristol yes. that got done dirty in that uh, European game as well yeah, yeah. but um, Toulouse ended up getting through anyway Bordeaux did not want to win as it turns out and uh, yeah, they are they're in a, into another final. By contrast, La Rochelle dispatched oh, they showed, um, they showed good qualities in dispatched that game. Racing really well. Much so better pack. Strong. Yeah, that was it. Like brilliant. Pork, uh, the, was there is it Classens at number eight for, yeah, for Racing? Broken. He looked a broken man at like twenty two yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah. Like after one one set of attacking the, in theory attacking the La Rochelle guys but the whistle goes at the end and they're like all the back row forwards yeah. in Racing are just broken and yeah. was like stars going around the kind of Looney Tunes animation of the boys just being pumped it's, it's hilarious yeah. to see how Racing are reported by like Rugby Pass and, uh, <laughs> and the media over here I, mean, yeah. I saw a headline after that game going uh, Racing stun star studded uh, no sorry La Rochelle. La Rochelle stun or shock star studded uh, Racing I was like, Larry, we're always going to win that game. Yeah. But to my eye, and maybe this is a fault of my eye, because I like, I, I'm looking at Toulouse and I see flaws and I see holes in their game. And then I look at La Rochelle and I think that's the best team in Europe, personally. Like just watching them play most weeks, I think their defense, their pack, they're on a they're on another level to what Toulouse are doing. And yet, obviously, the two met in the final and Toulouse got the better of them. Red card notwithstanding, they did get the better of that game. Yeah. And so it creates this interesting dynamic where. You know, at La Rochelle, they are. They might be the better team on paper. They might be playing the better rugby, but they are ah, new to thing. finals. Yeah, there's and, such a and, thing as yeah, pedigree. Yeah, yeah. This is they they qualify in beating Racing. This is their first yeah. uh, top Couture's final in the club's history. Yeah, now, that ain't true for Toulouse at all. No, like, indeed, and that's yeah. that's just an intangible thing for for Ron O'Gara and John O'Gibbs and the boys to try and. Uh, Try and get their heads around. Like obviously, Elgar is no stranger to finals footy, but a lot of those guys are, and it's yeah. it's a tough thing to manage. Some some teams, some some teams we've seen underperform historically. We obviously we, the the jokes are made about Clermont Auvergne and their their terrible relationship with European finals and whatnot. The the book has yet to be written on La Rochelle, but one thing's for sure, yeah, they are a bullying, bruising pack. We know that firsthand having watched them do so to Leinster but uh, yeah they did the same to yeah, the to right hand side well. of that scrum is insane Antonio oh, yeah. and Skelton Antonio and Skelton yeah. just incinerating scrums out of them <laughs> before the poor harassing guys were just mushed by, by the first quarter oh, they were done. It was, and then it kind of petered out that game and like it, it was all decided in the first half and really it was kind of the first half of the first half that you were just watching yeah. it going ah yeah no, you watch, you, you watch one scrum <laughs> yeah. you watch one scrum and you know the harassing can't yeah, deal and nothing is, all the Kirtley Beals or Finns yeah, can do Rassing Finn, gotta learn man the, 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 you got to build a pack you yeah. want to build a rugby team you got to start with a pack you know yeah. you're putting if you're a millionaire putting a rugby team together start with the tight head yeah. lay your foundation <laughs> yeah, and you yeah, can yeah. build the house no, you we're know? building a big old wibbly tower <laughs> yeah. with no foundations beneath <laughs> yeah, exactly. it at all but a curtly um, um, yeah, yeah it's a, probably a little harsh on the racing pack but they're not on the level of the La Rochelle guys and that told yeah. and now yeah we, ha- we are at the crescendo it is a repeat of that European match uh, La Rochelle get another go at it yeah. and Toulouse get a chance to, to do a double as, as Exeter did last year and make yeah. history and I'd definitely be curious to see it I mean I don't want to diss Toulouse because like I, I, their style of rugby isn't necessarily great, and they haven't been putting it all together. But what they do have is just undeniable world class talent, and a bit, and a bit of undeniable 
pedigree and savvy. Yeah, more than like, that, though, I just think that the quality of, of Colby and DuPont and Kino, in fact, mm-hmm. um, just those few guys who are just a level above yeah. really does help them. I and wonder, are they still missing a few locks? Because I think the two Arnold's... No, the two, Arnold, Arnold's back. He was they, playing the both weekend. Of them are well, back. One of them was. I think Rory was, anyway, at the right. weekend. So they'll definitely have some of their locks. And big to Corey to come in. And big to Corey yeah. took a knock as well. Because they, they did use all of them in that final. Like, it is... Repelling Skeleton is is a, a two or a three big men <laughs> yes, job, you know, is. so yeah, yeah. they will need to, their, their their tools there, but they do have a hefty pack themselves. They've improved on that uh, compared to the, the Toulouse we saw a couple of seasons ago that were a little slight in that area and certainly yeah, they, saw Leinster do, do dir- them dirty. They've definitely improved in that regard. They weren't shocked by La Rochelle in the final. No, nope, uh, Not in dealt, anywhere the same way it, yeah. that, uh, that Leinster were or that, like, more recently Rassing were last week. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, no, it's a, it's a definite matchup of giant men in the tight and then it'll come down to a bit of clutch and a bit of game management from the the halfbacks you have Kerbarlo versus uh, versus Dupont again yeah it's box office as well Ehi West big job and that's as the well. other area you know yeah, Ehi West and he has to kick his goals he has to do his his job they've obviously got police on waiting in the wings mm-hmm. and that's been a narrative you know Ehi uh, he's a hard man to, to peg down you know you he, he, does he does he have clutch does he not have clutch Sometimes he scores tries against the Lions that win for the Blues, and other yeah. times he misses simple kicks on big occasions. Yeah, and so he's a hard man to pin down. It's it's true. Lehigh West. It's, it's true. hard to know whether is he is he great. One, is he one bad? thing, one thing he is is a Kiwi. Yeah, and, and, and in his halfback pairing of two Kiwis, Rog is determined that they will move the ball at some yeah. points, and that that is what they allow them to do. Yeah, um, I like they, they, the narrative is them being a big team, but they are a magnificent phase play team. Yeah, they, they do they, they do stretch the field and they do attack. They run good really lines. Well. They yeah. Put, put tempo on it Carballo yeah. does drive a nice tempo and to be honest all the teams in the top tours this year have been driving pretty nice tempos yeah. even teams like Montpellier have been driving a quicker tempo similar to what we were saying about the Premiership that the standard has just raised and the rising tide raises all boats and it's uh yeah, the, the average Top Couture's game that you're watching is is better than it has been in a few years yeah, gone by. No question. And that's no why question. these two teams that have reached the top are playing such stellar, stellar rugby. Yeah, and if, if, if you fancy it, I believe Premier Sports have picked up the broadcasting rights. So if you're in Britain or Ireland anyway, you can you can, you can can pick up this uh, this final, which is a game between the two best teams in Europe yeah. and definitely should be a fun one to watch. Uh, I believe it is, what day is it? It's Saturday. It's Friday evening. Friday, Friday evening, evening this weekend. Yeah, to 8.45 uh, kickoff uh, in the Stade de France. So yeah. Yeah, it doesn't clash with the Lions Tour or anything like that. A nice little curtain raiser get some Friday night footy into you from France. Yeah, it's um, gonna it's yeah. gonna be a quality game. I'm looking forward to it. And personally, I think La Rochelle. You're leaning La Rochelle. Yeah, I think they'll do it. I think they'll go one and one each in, in the finals. I don't think either of them roll on. I don't think either of them quite deserve to win both. But maybe, I, maybe that's maybe I'm being harsh on Toulouse. I'm sure a lot of people love Toulouse, but I've been watching them. And maybe it's just these Bordeaux games have me jaded. I've been watching them and going, I don't think they're quite the full product Not, I don't think they're the sum of their parts mm. which is funny it's given, funny because they're yeah. European champions now yeah no it is five star champions and I said the same thing about Exeter last year yeah, more fully did. they went and won they went and won as well so, you yeah. know maybe, maybe, it's, maybe it's, it's full of it full of it full of it he is Could let be. us know in the comments below <laughs> but what Colby yeah um, but uh, yeah in terms of French before we move entirely on from France just you're not going to pick a team oh I'm going to pick Toulouse I think Okay, I'm good. I'm just going to say Toulouse for good Claudia. on you. Good on you. Yeah, Put double your, champions. Yeah, nail yourself uh, to the mast. Absolutely. There. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, just going to make mention of this funny old sideshow. In the Pro De, which wrapped up as well, similar to the championship, we had uh, two teams coming up that are old favourites of ours now, Biarritz and Perpignan. Are, 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 oh, by, oh, sorry, are, Biarritz and Perpignan, Perpignan, Perpignan are yeah. coming up uh, as a result of it. But yeah, um, Biarritz were kicked to glory by uh, Armitage in the second ever penalty shootout in a knockout game of rugby and arguably the most consequential one ever because yeah, yeah. this was to get into the top couture's which the previous one very famous one between Leicester Tigers and Cardiff saw Leicester into the final of Europe which is a big payday in and of yeah, itself yeah. A, gra- a grand final a European final no mug but to get in and play top couture's footy for a year off the back of a penalty shootout that's pretty pretty stellar stuff it's re- it's remarkable really i've never 
<laughs> it's very valuable to the team. Yeah, the um, team, it's crazy. I mean, all those teams back in 09 were playing for it was the honor of being beaten by Leinster in a final. So, true. like, that's 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 not as that's not as mm. appealing as a whole season in the top tours. Yeah, yeah, crazy that they're still doing it. Other other leagues have amended the it's penalty to, get to rid prevent of it. it on account yeah. of its fundamental silliness. Yes, it is. Um, and then the, the the net result was Armitage, big, <laughs> Stephen, big Armitage. Stephen Armitage yeah, kicking yeah. the winning kick, which um, is just silly. Like he should, he doesn't even have to kick. He's, yeah, it was yeah. a good kick, but it's like. Why is he well, like a kick? in theory? If 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 everyone's accurate, or is it gonna come down to like a prop? Having yeah, to kick a, a prop goal? missing a kick. That's not a, that's not a fair way to decide a rugby match. It's not the same as football. Like yeah. football, everyone on the pitch is expected to kick a ball with reasonable accuracy. Yes, which makes the shootout fair. In that yes, sense. Indeed. like you should all be able to kick the ball in the net if you're a footballer. You should all be but able to kick the ball. Rugby. Rugby. Yeah, from yeah, the twenty two, yeah. like there's some props are so alien to that Just skill at all. And, and good on them. They yeah, don't have they to. They don't be. have yeah, to yeah. if they're dropping it on the toe every other I think, day. I think that we should scrum for for the win. If yeah. It, if if after full time, if after full time the scores are level, and yeah. after extra time the scores are level. We go to the halfway set, set line a scrum. and set a scrum. <laughs> whoever wins, and whoever gets to the ten first, <laughs> yeah. whoever gets to the yeah, ten first, it. and if, uh, and yeah, if if it collapses, just keep on going. <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah, no, it would collapse. The ten can't work because someone would just drag it down. Just uh, do a fifteen man scrum. However that's that a good one. one. Yeah, that's a good one. Get all the backs in. Yeah, as auxiliary flankers and try and drive yeah, them. That form way. a scrum in some way, and then just have a have a mole, have a mole. Yeah, a to- or a tug of war. Be, you, could, you, you could just do tug of war. <laughs> you could just do an egg and Anything spoon race for <laughs> you know, like yeah. it's it's as as silly as it need be. But it was a great story. And fair play to Armitage. Commiserations to was it Bayonne, uh, Bayonne who are the the ones the, the yeah. jilted ones in this because it's not fair and it, as you say for all yeah. those reasons it's not a not a sensible way to decide a rugby game. It's a bit of a throwback um, to see uh, to see Perpignan and, and Biarritz back in the yeah. top of tours though, and good to see as well. They were they were left behind by the financial wave that swept through the top of tours. Yeah, but they are huge historical um, institutions in French yes, rugby. Indeed, and great flying, pedigree in Europe as yeah, well. And, and, past, and yeah. Perpignan flying the Catalan colours in rugby is great to see. And, and yeah. I, I know Bayonne or Basque as well and that's the local derby would be a Ritz for the traditional big Basque club as well yeah. so it's good to see them but, but it, I think the, the league is better for having both of them in it yeah, I, I think they're wonderful rugby people and out so, there so, so long farewell to Agen to best of luck in the Pro Do Agen they yeah. scored two points in the top tour well. season they will struggle in this proto, which is high quality. It still has teams like Bayonne yeah, and other, I don't know, other I don't know what I, I genuinely, I didn't watch a minute of them. I just saw their scores and I was like, what is going on with Agen? <laughs> Agen have nothing. <laughs> yeah, they were protest voting. But uh, that does then wrap up the season in France as well. So we will uh, pivot. We're sticking with Europe as well. We have another final to review. Congratulations to Rainbow Cup champions Benetton Rugby. <sighs> What uh, by a score of thirty five to eight, yeah. they pump the inept bulls that came a, came crazy. arrived in Benetton to play a, crazy. play a Sunday league game of some kind. <laughs> Chris Smith rocking up with a fr- black eye from some other schmozzle that happened pre kickoff, and they looked drunk and slow and dropping balls. Were, and yeah. Benetton, by contrast, looked. Sharp it was and crazy. alive, and what a what a campaign it was! They're yeah. unbeaten in the Rainbow Cup. Yeah, magnificent. Yeah. I mean fantastic for them I mean you look you think of the hurt that some of those Italian guys have gone through oh, in yeah. both club and test footy you just you'd, you'd, you'd need to have a heart of stone not to, <laughs> to, be, to be to be delighted for them delighted for oh, them they are the truly. bright light they have been and it was disappointing yeah, yeah. this season that they went winless in the Pro 14 and it felt anomalous because they had been growing and growing and they like they won a game in the RDS a few seasons ago against Leinster they've They've been the best thing about Italian rugby for quite a while. Yeah, um, yeah. Like, and they've been growing and growing for quite a while. And to see them kind of put it all together in a kind of condensed, short form, one off tournament. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was great the ra- to it see. was funny. The Rainbow Cup was was not right for anybody except Benetton. Yeah. It was it was great for Benetton because it allowed them to press reset on the season. Yeah. And then they came with just just much sharper, much sharper uh, rugby in general. They yeah. played lovely, flowy, attacking footy. Garbisi's really maturing into the role oh, of running. And offense really good, from ten, really good. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's beautiful. He just got them moving, and it yeah, was yeah. like it was good, simple tactics against a bull side that were a bit disjointed. They just didn't have the bit. They didn't <laughs> kick it out. So Garby, they just kicked it in field, so there were no no line outs. And then yeah. before long, the bulls just dropped balls or kicked it aimlessly, yeah, and nothing. then and then yeah, yeah. like it was just a, a few nice link men's Garbisi passing really well, and then. Ioanni finding the breakthrough score in the first half, and then like you, you had guys lethal like, winger by the way, Monte Ioanni. Monte Ioanni like, looking honestly, great. if yeah. he was if he was eligible for the Lions, you'd pick him nearly. He's, he's that been, good. He's, he's, he's very dangerous, very very sharp winger. 
and uh, yeah brilliant scenes it was a funny one like pre-game all anyone thought was that and, and myself included that the Bulls were going to run up a score here on Bennett and it was going to be a mismatch and then as soon as kickoff happened you could tell that yeah. it was inevitable that it was going to go the other way. Yeah, I was good. Like it, I wasn't worried when when Bennett and we were like wh- whatever it was at halftime. They had the scoreline flattered the Bulls, even though Bennett had like a ten point lead. Yeah, but I wasn't worried. I was looking no. at it going, "There's no way. No, this, there's no this Bulls way outfit the Bulls are going to come back." It was it was the yeah. worst Marcel could see a showing I've ever seen. Probably, yeah, probably. Yeah, um, yeah. Like he was dre- he was in he was there as leader ostensibly and he and he was dreadful and then but also the halfback pairing Van Sale and Chris Smith is, is the worst yeah. one you can pick for the Bulls I think it's, and it's Van Sale's to... little diving miss to gift a try to the Benetton boys yeah. was like it was comical badness from the Bulls and the fact that they split their squad it is unfortunate they had to play a Curry Cup match on the same day yeah, and never seen to, that um, before in, in terms of a consequential final but they also Roscoe lost Roscoe Speckman lost to the 7 squad for the Olympics as well yeah. they've they've gone off and then obviously there are lads uh, who stayed behind to, 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 to train with the, the Springboks who will yeah. be facing Georgia next week so they, they put a bit of a hodgepodge side out there but Cornell Hendricks was in the side uh, Van Furen was in the side. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't a nothing team, yeah. but yeah, Van, uh, uh, Van Sale and, and Chris Smith in particular are not the the future of the franchise, and the Bulls got truly caught cold. They got um, pumped. But the, sto- the and you know what? I was going to say the story is Benetton, but it definitely there's not nothing to the fact that the the it, it's the first game a South African team has played against a non South African team in forever yeah. and it was a horrific loss and it's it did it'd be, yeah. si- it'd be silly of them not to doubt themselves the first, a little the after first that. time they left South Africa to yeah. play a game of rugby they went to Italy to score one try and concede loads concede <laughs> 35 points and only score 8 that's yeah. not good like, no, there's no crazy. nothing good about pretty, that pretty crazy um, yeah. pretty crazy to think and yeah they'll, they'll definitely be given pause if not panicking a little yeah. that, that, that's such a thing to happen and they'll have to assess mm-hmm. you know hang on what standard have we been playing at here that's has true it, has it been yeah, good enough I don't know echo chamber thinking are, are we getting a bit possible. too predictable uh, are a team just with simple tactics to try and keep the ball yeah, in play and keep the tempo yeah, exactly. high and just suddenly... doing something that like it doesn't occur to the Stormers the Sharks or the Lions to do Yeah, like they all have the same rhythms that they hit in games and then yeah. the games just take a certain shape Yeah, and then if you if you do that for long enough you get stunned by anything new, and, yeah, and, yeah. and yeah, listen, Rossi and, and Nienaber are such smart coaches, and they have such one of the great strengths of South African rugby is that they have such uh, a wide net in terms of their player base. They yeah. have guys playing everywhere. After Kirk is playing the Premiership to the highest standard, Colby obviously in Toulouse winning European True. medals, yeah, yeah. like that. All of that is going to wealth is wealth and diversity is going to come back into the yeah, squad. Exodus is going to come in. So I wouldn't panic. Yeah. But it's definitely just a little worry. That's a little alarm bell uh, yeah. for, from a South African point of view. Make Take nothing away from the fact that it is the greatest day in Benetton rugby no, history. No, that's the main story. And yeah, it's yeah. the first time they've won a trophy and absolutely delighted for them, bully yeah. for them. They, they will forever be the Rainbow Cup champions, I expect, because I don't thoroughly think there'll be another Rainbow no. Cup so they can keep that trophy yeah. and have it adorning their lovely trophy cabinet now. And sure, look, I'm excited for them. I think they have fundamentally earned it I've enjoyed watching Bennett and develop over the last three years because I didn't used to like yeah. watching Treviso they were muck um, and then when they kind of did the rebranding for Bennett and I wasn't fully convinced but then you find players like Garbisi now Ioanni and you have guys in the back row like Negri and stuff and it's just it's a good competent you, um, team they're, 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 they're like Maro at game. seven had as good a game oh, as that and I've watched him in Six Nations that he deserved as well yeah, yeah. yeah I've watched him in Six Nations games struggle a little in recent times but he was uh, he was everywhere he was on the money yeah. he was fantastic and um, yeah they, they, I just you know, you never know what what a bit of momentum and a bit of confidence might do for a young group of players yeah absolutely and therefore you know that it, it's interesting i want italy obviously to play more games of their own level yeah um but i think this is as good a news story to come out of italian rugby since 1999 indeed yeah yeah well not since dominguez have you seen <laughs> yeah. 10 with as excitement as yeah, exciting yeah, yeah. a potential a ceiling as, as garbisi yeah, yeah. and it's just yeah, it's exciting. It's congratulations to Bennett, and I was literally just gleefully la- la- oh, it almost was in, I was in a bewildered, like chaotic grin on my head and chuckling <laughs> as the next try ran in. <laughs> yeah. so, oh my God, Bennett. go on, Bennett. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, commiserations to our Bulls friends and fans, but uh, you know, it was it was Benetton's day. And they are Rainbow Cup champions. And uh, with that, then, that signs off the European season. And it means that we will now have... We ha- do have new branding. 
your United Rugby Championship is going to take the place of the Pro 14. We were, there was a bit of speculation as to what this would be called when the South African teams join, but now we have an answer. It's the United Rugby Championship, or URC, I guess. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be going alongside alongside the uh, the English and French seasons. It's going to be a longer season for these clubs. Um, slightly new setup. Uh, eight teams in terms of getting into the playoff, which is a slight gripe for viewers. You probably would have rather seen a barrage style. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, that sort of NFL style where first and second, and barrage style, where mm. first and second get the bye and then the, the, the quarterfinal is just between uh, third through sixth. Yeah, I like that a little better just because... Like when you have a sixteen, eight. when you have a sixteen uh, team league, and then you have eight teams making the playoffs, Seems it sort generous. of removes the stakes. Well, especially from a Leinster perspective, I mean, it is not inconceivable that Leinster finish, um, you know, uh, that Leinster, you know, have a bad season and don't do what they usually do and top that league. But when you put eight teams in it and you make it a quarter final thing, really kind of just remove those stakes. And I would have liked the little interdynamics of having a barrage, meaning that there's something real to play for as far as finishing the top two, first yeah. of all. Get your buy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then obviously the top six inside outside of that as well. So I, yeah, I, I, it's, it's probably a little worse in terms of that, but... The overall format excites me. I, I, yeah. I, I, I think this is really. I think this is it's a the, good thing. This is what the league needs. Thing. I think it's a hundred percent. And you know what? what South Africa rugby needs as well. Oh, it's true. And then I, as as the other bit of speculation is the teams that are in it now, the four South African teams will be eligible based on their place in the league to go and play in the top uh, the top tier in Europe as well. Yeah, the Champions yeah. Cup and Challenge Cup. So we could be. have the Sharks against the Sharks. We could have the Sharks the against South the Sharks, sharks in an all Safa the derby. Sharks. Yeah, yes, <laughs> that, the that teeth could be will going. be bared in that one. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Many Dupriyas. How many Dupriyas do you need? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah it's, um, it could happen yet, but, uh, yeah, but it's maybe exciting. It's, just, I'm, I'm, it's I'm, the injection of something. And actually, I don't hate that we dropped the branding because I think the whole Pro 12, Pro 14 era, just speaking as a Leinster fan, just watching it, I think it's not been a really good standard of league for a while. No, um, I agree. And I think it's yeah, yeah. suffered in the, in the public consciousness for if you're going like Pro 14, is probably this or the rabbo, some people still it's, call it's, it. But it's, it's, not, it's not it's, arrogance from an Irish fan's point of view to say that the Irish teams have just been carrying this league like the what the, the welsh teams obviously have have struggled a little bit to, and the scottish teams to retain their players as yeah. much and a lot fin- of them the are going off fiscal challenges um, really yeah, for them. Yeah. They, they can't compete with the big poor person and the guys who are there just don't like they just don't have the same appreciation or, or buy-in for club footy it seems mm. as the guys in, uh, in 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 the irish provinces do but yeah having that fresh dynamic having these super rugby teams who've played you know, games against the Crusaders, who are you know in in many cases Springbok internationals, and just those at this the sheer size and power as well as some of those South African teams and the sheer um, altitude of some of those venues that are going yeah, to come into play it, it now. Just add a um, real different, yeah. fresh dynamic and add an, an a, a layer of quality to the league. That and was the, desperately needed. That was desperately needed, yeah. and the teams of the lower levels, the Welsh team, not to be disrespectful, Scarlets obviously, if they ever put it together, can be brilliant. Yeah. But the teams of currently of lower levels. Um, have that um, a little a little thing in their favour, which is that in the con- you, it, there are four conferences: the Irish teams, the Thaffer teams, the Welsh teams, and the Scottish, the Scots Italians. Yeah, um, Scotch Italians. Yeah, and yeah. they each play each other twice, and the rest of the league once. Yeah, which kind of stack it evens it up a little bit because obviously our, a bit like the Rainbow Cup format, the Irish teams knock lumps out of each other, the Saffis teams knock lumps out of each other. And then that allows sort of a team from Wales or Scotland to or Italy uh, or Italy as yeah. the case may be to mm. emerge uh, fr- from that and, and are given sort of a leg up. So it might just even out the odds a little bit. Of course, the likes of Connacht will find it extraordinarily harsh yes. that they have to play the Irish teams twice and they don't get the cushy draw that say Glasgow get having to play Zebra and Edinburgh twice or yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. But um, it, even so, I just think it it works well. And I actually think you need the Derby games home and away you as do, well. To just for all going. kinds of reasons, fiscal money yeah. as well. You sell you get tickets good good intrigue separate things it's nice to preserve the interpros as well which the league has done a good job of trying to do and they've kind of moved them around the calendar over various mm. years but they are an important part of that calendar whether it be around the christmas time that they 
keep everyone close or yeah. in COVID times that they just only play into pros and derbies but uh, yeah no it's just it's nice to have a new branding nice to have a, a bit of a firm roadmap for how this season is going to go how it's going to look now and uh, yeah I'm just excited for it now just to yeah, see how I these Safa teams match up obviously that the cold run with the blue the Bulls was a bit of a, a blowout it was but a bit I, of a humbling it was a humbling but I yeah, expect yeah. like the Sharks will bring hustle away from home they, course, they always yeah. do they show up in New Zealand on tours and do yeah, do the Sharks things. travel better than any yeah. of the other Safa teams that's true and they have probably more toughness to them as well but yeah it, it sort of negates the bad habits i'm curious yeah. to see what I'm you also think i'm curious um, to see what edinburgh looked like at altitude in the last quarter against the lions <laughs> i really think they'll struggle yeah exactly <laughs> but it, it'll allow all teams to learn more lessons it, diversifying yeah. the league i don't think is a bad thing but you know you will get pushback from the likes of you know you hear the critique from the welsh fans a lot that it's not you know that they would prefer the sort of parochial derby games most of the time um, and you, there's definitely a critique there that like you know look Super Rugby tried to expand and tried to broaden out and tried to be the, the global league and ended up you know now they're in a position where the Safas have left and the Aussies are, are sort going of back to parochial thinking, roots. thinking about yeah, yeah. just doing the home league themselves and whether mm-hmm. that might not be the best solution yeah. and it's, so it's, it creates an interesting question do you think like long term this is going to work it's going to get the buy in from fans or are people going to get you know jaded with the format and well, I think I think yeah. so. It's not like in in Super Rugby we're dealing with a massive brand that was getting bigger and bigger before kind of growing to consume itself. When you're getting into Sun Wolves and all this kind of mm. territory, and it just got a little silly and too expansive, you're not dealing with that. You're in this in this case, you're kind of rebranding to get rid of the the the, the dying, the dying brand, brand yeah. and trying to reinvigorate it as a, as opposed to the other way around. So, I actually yeah. think there is scope for this to work. I think. Time zone wise, it works in terms of kickoffs. I know it's a, a, a beef that Safas have that, uh, like, they love playing the Kiwi teams, but they don't love the timing of it because for them, it's you know a barbecue, a beer, an afternoon rugby on the TV, it's which this same thing which doing that at seven a.m. No, seven a.m. <laughs> it just just doesn't isn't as tenable. <laughs> yeah. So uh, th- it'll work out in terms of time zones in that regard, and I think yeah, it'll create interesting looks and interesting dynamics and just interesting games. I'm, yeah, I'm looking forward to developing a rivalry with the Bulls, or the yeah, Sharks, or the Sharks. I'm seeing Mon- Mon- who and Munsters rival right Munster sharks be a very physical arm wrestle of a game almost certainly yeah and so yeah no all of these are really good good matchups ulster v the v the lions at altitude like with the 110 point game (laughs) you know like (laughs) all all, all of these could be fun and uh, and it just adds an extra spice to to the champions cup and challenge cup when we finally see see the safa teams join yeah that'll be fun Um, too that'll really up the ante and make you know well it's already for me undeniable that the champions cup's the best tournament in, 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 in rugby yeah. and yeah that'll that'll just add an extra level to it so that element of it is oh, truly exciting. exciting yeah excited yeah. for so that'll be the new look next year will be these three as we review yeah. uh, in Europe but uh, with that we will park Europe and keep with the club footy because there's club footy going on all across the world and uh, similar to what we were doing at the start we're going to have to do a bit of housekeeping starting with Super Rugby um, in Aotearoa in New Zealand first we had perennial champs crusaders did beat the Chiefs despite yes. our best wishes for the Chiefs. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it ended up being uh, the Crusaders pulling away a little bit. What was it? A two score game, I think, in the end, wasn't it? Uh, 24, 24 13. 13. So, yeah, two score game. Uh, just a little bit of an arm's length distance between the two sides in the end, although the Chiefs had a great season. And considering their, yeah. their winless season the year before under Gatland, it was uh, nice to see them back to, to winning ways and then just positive footy ways. Yeah, exactly. They, they would be hungry for some silverware, though. The Chiefs just had, didn't happen for them. No. Um, but the Crusaders, yes, and Robertson it's, dancing again. And they were the, it's the best just too that. good. Just yeah. too good. Just too good, as yeah. they say. Um, and then, meanwhile, the, the better final, I thought, and the better event came across the Tasman as the Reds 100%. managed to beat the Brumbies. They're g- great rivals. They were ding-dong battles throughout the season. They were kind of close. The Reds edged the, the win for the home final earlier in the season in a truly spectacular yeah. game. This one was a little bit tighter of a contest, wasn't as, as high scoring, but it still finished 19-16 with a, in front of a raucous crowd. Yeah, they um, scored it right at the death. They yeah. scored the try, the, the try that the cameraman missed Yes, uh, that's right. Right, right at the death of the game. And yeah, just incredible scenes out in Suncorp and really... Really, I just think it was what, I, what I think, Aussie rugby yeah, desperately, desperately needed. I think Super um, Rugby AU is without question one of the most positive things to come out of them um, this season. This, uh, this, this season yeah. globally, I think it was brilliant. The numbers it did on Stan Sport over there are yeah. awesome, and the quality of rugby and the quality of young talent in Australia is 
fantastic and a lot of you know hack journalists and the like have really tried to shit on Aussie rugby in recent times yeah. um, because in of the wake of the Trans Tasman which the Trans Tasman didn't work as well but it no like, it was a goofy format where they only played the Kiwi teams and the Kiwi teams only played the Aussie teams so it, it, for me that's just stacked against the like the, the obviously the four the, the strength and depth isn't there from an Aussie perspective and there are two quality teams in the Reds and the Brumbies but you're kidding yourself if you don't think that those are quality teams they're great teams mm-hmm. and the the tournament was stacked against them well, from yeah, the start the, the, if you're a Kiwi team plotting your way through that tournament you're like okay well listen we're going to beat the force we're going to beat the rebels we're going to beat the uh Whoever else is Taz. The, the Taz, oh god, the Taz, yeah, they were the poor they Taz. Were, they were in dire straits. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're going to win those few games so we can rest up, uh, uh, you know, limit the intensity those weeks, and then maybe pick a few more squad players and still see out the win. And then we know the big week mm-hmm. is when we're playing the Brumbies or when we're playing yeah. the Reds, and so we can prep accordingly. Whereas on the flip side of that, the Reds and the Brumbies had every week a quality team to play. And so it was really the depth of the Kiwi rugby that told there. Yeah. But I just thought it was like it was a super harsh format on the Reds and the Brumbies. Yeah. And they still managed to get their scalp. Both yeah. of them managed to get the win get they a did. win. They did. Um, and you know, the Reds lost James O'Connor early doors, Jordan Bataille wasn't there for them. They don't yeah. quite have the same depth, and so it didn't fall for them. But the the attempts to, to act like the Aussie rugby is like in dire straits and that they're in or crisis. That, or that they have. This is improved. the most positive year for Australian rugby in years, many years. And the, years. the fact, yeah, and yeah. The, like to, the notion that it's the format yeah. that that's the problem with it. I think the format has been great in terms of Super Rugby the AU, AU format, yeah. uh, creating more entry, creating more crowds, just getting free to wear, free to wear, all of that yeah. huge for Aussie rugby. And then yeah, the quality of this Brumby side and this Queensland Red side. They, they are two much better teams than had been playing at the tail end of Super Rugby as it was finishing up. And like, the, the, those shows That was were, abject. They yeah, were yeah. abject. They yeah. were terrible. And For they were always quarters. in empty stadia yeah, yeah. and like all the people were the just... Br- the Brumbies were the best team in Australia and they were horrible to watch. They, they just had a line-out mall and, and that was else. about it. They yeah. were relentlessly efficient on the line-out drive and that really kept them in games. And they had some toughness to them, more toughness than any of the other Australian teams. Yeah. But they didn't have what they have this year, which is this really clinical, ruthless attacking edge. Yeah, some nice guys like Icky and, and, yeah, and yeah. even Muirhead on the wing. Just really exciting players. Yeah. And I'm just I'm looking forward to seeing what the Wallabies put together because I think it's been really positive. I think yeah. they've great young talent. I and think I think so. they're going places. I think um, so. And don't, don't put too much stock into what happened to them in, in Trans Tasman. No, don't. Now, it's speaking um, of Trans Tasman, we had a whole other champion, the Blues. Yes. Congratulations to have to be given to the Blues, similar to Bennett. And this is their first trophy in, in their cabinet after an 18 year wait uh, Auckland Blues are champions of Super Rugby Trans Tasman they beat uh, the uh, Highlanders as we said earlier on in the final Yeah, and uh, it was it was a good final they had just too much for them it's funny the that they had the final it just goes to show how it really goes to my point about what I was saying it's just how wide, well spread the talent is in New Zealand it's done very much deliberately yeah. but you know the, the Aotearoa final was Crusaders Chiefs and the Taz, Taz, Tasman final was Blues Highlanders. Yeah. There's very little between all those Kiwi teams. The Crusaders are still the best team, and the fact that it took sort of try bonus points and, and, and goal difference or whatever yeah. to make up the final was a bit goofy. Yeah, it was. The whole but, format of the Trans Tasman yeah. thing did take from it. It wasn't as good as no. the first half of the season, which was no. the domestic things. I still think there's so much merit in the Super Rugby AU and Super Rugby Aotearoa that those are yeah. worth keeping. Um, as and as then for just the have like a champions format, format. Yeah, yeah, yeah champions you could do the top two teams from either conference I like you could it, do it yeah. that right away I like it that's yeah, much yeah. better and then have a semi-final final kind of finish the or season. even a round robin uh, if you want to get more games robin in, if you want to get but, more games but yeah. yeah like anything like that would be better but the inclusion of teams like the Waratahs this season who were just like Mm. so abject in Super Rugby AU that it was like it was it, they knew it was going to be very ugly when, when Trans Tasman came around and so it proved like there was no value in those guys going over they hadn't earned it yet they need another couple of seasons yeah. of Super Rugby AU to get themselves up to the quality that they can then cross the Tasman and take on the big boys that's I feel yeah. like how it, the dynamic should work, but I think this format is is really good for mainly the Australian teams in terms agree, of keeping yeah, the intrigue huge. and getting bums on seats and eyeballs on screens and just getting people excited about rugby. Where like in that's in like there's no competition with mm. rugby. Like New Zealand are always going to love rugby. Rugby yeah. is the national religion of, of of New Zealand, and we all know this. Um, for Australia, it it it's competing for eyeballs with a lot more sports. You have AFL, you have N- NRL, you have just generally like cricket even swimming, <laughs> swimming. they just love sport yeah. so 
much that uh, it's a constant jostle for for position, and uh, it's yeah having yeah, a domestic and, and, comp like that. It was extremely was strong. It was extremely strong. Right down to how well it was covered. It was night and day. The Stan Sport coverage. I've seen even seen some of the punditry and just the tone of the guys there was just way better than what they were doing at Fox Sports with yeah. Phil Kearns and the boys just whinging oh. and moaning and talking nonsense to Phil, my like, Phil Kearns impression yeah. Just, oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah no yeah. all of that was gone and it was it was yeah it was a delight it was a delight I thought Super Rugby AU was one of my season highlights and I'm not I'm not having people trying to know it and get, and, and get on top of it and it does put Rugby Australia in this awkward sort of philosophical space where they're like because in my view, like the Reds and the Brumbies are able to mix it with those Kiwi teams. If you put a neutral format, they'll struggle because over a long form season format because they don't have the same depth. Yeah, but but they, their teams, their first nice team rugby. certainly can mix it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so they have a decision to make as to whether they want to lean back into going back towards a a regular Super Rugby team where they're playing regular season games against the Kiwi teams. Or whether they want to stick to their guns and keep the domestic season and, and keep and, events and like play, that, that yeah. great day in Suncorp, yeah, and, exactly. You know, like and those... have, have an AU final and have a champion team, and then have those champions and maybe uh, the Brumbies as well, or or if the Brumbies win the Reds as well, those two teams go out and play a couple of the Kiwi teams, and that could be the format that you do. But I know that New Zealand rugby want to go back in in a post COVID world to the same Super yeah, know, Rugby yeah. format, and I know, I think that Australia rugby Australia need to push back against that. I think they've found something in the midst of this pandemic that That's is worth you know, protecting. Yeah, it's whatever yeah. you call it, lightning in a bottle. Yeah, that that you need to keep Super Rugby. Yeah, AU. yeah, so I, th- I think so. So it's up in the air the future of Super Rugby, but it was a great season on balance and three yeah, yeah. champion teams. So congratulations yeah. to the Blues. The Crusaders and the Reds, yes, uh, <laughs> colorful com- combinations there, but Not uh, that colorful red well, and blue. red and blue, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, and the Crusaders, um, which yeah. is is some things just don't change, we had, we, despite the COVID thing. But uh, that wraps up Super Rugby as well. But there was other stuff going on. We had uh, the top league in Japan reached this denouement as well. It was the uh, the Wild Knights versus Suntory Sun Goliath at uh, the Prince Chichubu uh, Memorial Ground that happened on the 23rd of May and it was the Panasonic Wild Knights who took it in the end uh, as they often do they triumphed 31-26 over Suntory including Bowden throwing a, a pick, pick yeah, 7 which pick, is pretty crucial uh, yeah uh, bad the, bad early game pick from Bowden I mean Bowden did it was brilliant all yeah. season but uh, the Panasonic Wild Knights have a way about them and yeah, uh, yeah F- Fukuoka managed his uh, what is what does seem like his last game in pro rugby? It seems like he's going to stick to his guns and go be a doctor and, and good on him. But yeah. man, it is it is blow for our game because he is fun to watch. He, is. he looked in as good form as ever, yeah, scoring tries in a ever. final. Yeah, yeah. He could walk back into a world fifteen and be fine. But he's he's walking away from the game. So yeah. um, early, I just early to lose all, a winger of that caliber. All we can say is thank you for for the memories. Thank you, Kenki. Kenki yeah. has been just fun to watch. Personal Kenki highlight there. is the rip grip. Steal it. Against, against Scotland against Scotland in the World Cup yeah, like, yeah. it was just a beautiful try <laughs> yeah there were so many there yeah. were so many that guy was just lethal yeah and uh, still is but now still is, instead but he, of being lethal he's chosen to to, to leave to, well to go fight lethal diseases yeah, he, he, he doesn't want to be as lethal in his <laughs> medical <Yes. laughs> medical setup uh, Indeed. yeah he'll hope hope to to light it up as a as a really fast moving doctor um, yeah <laughs> exactly yeah, well, there's no question like if someone's, be code, first if someone's code, coding yeah, yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's just, there <laughs> yeah. right there the gap, the <laughs> gap between two nurses there <laughs> yeah um, exactly yeah but congratulations to uh, the Panasonic Wildlife it was a great season the, the actual the postseason produced some really really good games yeah. which showed the quality that is in the, t- the league there's, there's so many teams in the league that there are often mismatches in the regular ah, yeah, season there's an imbalance um, there's an Im- some teams are just are better resourced than yeah. others and, and are, are clearly paying through the nose where others aren't and so there is an imbalance in the regular yeah. season it's not it's far from a perfect league yeah. right down to the, the goofy um, ownership situation um, mm. it, like it's it's not a perfect league at all yeah. but the quality that was on show as you say in the business end was undeniable and yeah. brilliant and, and then some of the caliber yeah. of the signings obviously you have Bowden Barrett repping oh, the Suntory just watching and just play each other yeah. in a different way Michael Hooper was fun. there for, for some of the like, TJ Piranaro was at the Red Hurricanes they got to the semi-final as well yeah. Yeah. Vili LaRue Vili LaRue there was just some really really Mac good Azzoli, quality Mapimpi. all of these I'll guys I tell you Mapimpi came back into the Sharks and this is another harkens back to our South Africa concerns yeah 
Yeah. Um, but he came back to the Sharks and just looked levels above everyone else in the pitch after yeah. spending the season in Japan. There you go. Um, Interesting yeah, to yeah. see that because yeah, the, you've seen like the league was played at a good pace and there was there was definitely good tempo and good physicality there as well as world class yeah, yeah. players. So as these guys kind of return to base, what what skills have they picked up? We don't know, but uh, we're excited to see it as it grows into the international window. So, yeah, congratulations to the Wild Knights. And, uh, yeah, a, a to- another top league season in the books. And, uh, yeah, sure, it's, an, it's a Tier 1 comp now and a Tier 1 nation. Um, but this the uh, the other thing that happened in uh, that we were, were covering was the SLAR, the uh, well, Sudamerica South- Liga uh, America. No, sorry. What is this? Um Super Liga Americana de Rugby something, something I can't, I can't, I can't effect, figure yeah. what the S is yeah. Liga Americana Rugby well, I think it's it might be I don't know what it is so the America S. Is the, no because yeah. I think America is the A I'm mm. pretty sure okay so I don't know that's a mystery that is an, it's well, a mystery that's a Google away it is a Google away but, uh, we just um, haven't put it in the notes there. Yeah, we yeah. did have Super it, Liga actually. Americana de yes, Rugby yes but it's sure. or Slar as we have been calling it and it was as we kind of anticipated it was the only the first season because they tried to get it done last season and it got interrupted because COVID yeah. so now they have got a season in the books it was the Hagawaras 15 that uh, that claimed the title although they, they had to see off a very spirited Penarol side in the final it was closer than you would have anticipated at uh, what was it 36 28 in the yeah. end which bodes well because as we were saying there's a draft system where the the talent from the Argentina is being disseminated amongst the uh, the, the other, other teams, teams. Yeah, just at, at, a, at a ratio depending on your position in the table so yeah, hopefully you'll see guys like Cafeteras mm. Pro and, and some of these other Cobras, all of these other uh, franchises that have been in there, kind of bolstered by some fresh talent next season. And with one in the books, that's just gravy because it just means the foundation is now laid. They can keep going. They now have a history because there's one in, one in the books. And yeah. it can just, it's sowing good seeds for, for hopefully this to be a very good league in, uh, in South yeah, America. Yeah, and an important area. league as well because there's plenty of talent in South America yeah, coming through. for sure. And I tell you, Uruguay um, are, are just, they are coming like a freight train in terms of their march to the top of rugby. Like, they're marched through Tier 2 at the moment. Yeah. Their under-20 team just beating the Georgia under-20s at the weekend. When you think of what happened to their test team against Georgia at the World Cup. Yeah. Like, they're making leaps and bounds. And that Actually, that team that, that Pen- was de- defeating Penarol um, were the, Ur- were, were the Uruguayans. And I think 13 of their 15 or, or something like that. Are were, not Argentinian. Were, were not Argentinian. They're, they're Uruguayans. Uruguayan. Yeah. And so the Uruguay are, are very much a coming force and, and exciting things coming out yeah. of South America quietly. In yeah, the absolutely. And a shout out to Montevideo who hosted that whole tournament and have hosted a lot of great uh, inter- rugby, yeah, rugby yeah. like Tier 2 footy, but a lot of the time happens in Montevideo, making a little kind of pocket of, of rugby uh, pretty little mecca of rugby in, in South America there because yeah, yeah. it's been absolutely fantastic and uh, yeah it was just it was a great tournament to get in the books I know the tournament organisers were desperate desperate to get it done yeah. just so that they could now have it in the books and now it is Jaguars 15 are champions they were kind of kind of st- slated as such before the tournament even kicked off they were always going to be they yeah. were always probably going to be but hopefully when next season comes around the draft gets to work slightly fewer mismatches you get closer score lines and, and hopefully a few upsets and yeah we'll start hopefully start a, a, a new season of a, of a new kind of new bunch of franchises yeah, yeah. very much so um, so yes that was the, uh, the the South American Fair and actually that is wraps up all of our finals yes um, congratulations to all the champions yes. um, there were many in our absence um, there is one league uh, yet to crown a king and that is uh, in over in the States and yeah. Canada in North America yeah. uh, Major League Rugby is ongoing yeah. and uh, yeah the season is uh, season's just in its its regular season there's a, a four I think four game weeks four, left four left yeah because um, it finishes on the 18th of July and then the playoff the two playoff games are, are next week 24th and 25th of July yeah yeah um, and I tell you there's been some good games obviously the Giltinis got off uh, to a flyer at the start they topped their conference the Western Conference but just only four points over Utah who are great to watch and I tell you Mikey Teo's form is is, is astonishing yeah. he looks great I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing him uh, in a USA shirt trying to take on Ireland and England in the summer I just think 
there's scope for them to get some plays off. I'm I excited so. to see how they I look. I think so, yeah. Um, and uh, then the Gilgronies are five points behind Utah as well. It's it's going to be, they're from Austin, yeah. I should say. I should be naming the teams. Uh, the Austin Gilgronies are five points behind Utah and they have an uphill battle to try and close that gap because yeah. there's just two from each two conference places, I mean, uh, getting to the semi-final. Less so the San Diego Legion probably late, leaving it too late on 32. Yeah. But uh, but those are the only ones in the top four in uh, in the West. And then meanwhile in the East you have... The Ru- East is great. It's pretty, pretty East East stacked. Is, yeah, yeah. You have Rugby Atalanta uh, currently hold the top spot with 46 points. Um, however, Rooney, which is Rugby United New York, are on 41, just five back. Nola Gold are also are on 38. I enjoy uh, Nola Gold. They I play hope a they good can, brand. I hope they can sneak in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, the New England Free Jacks are also, they're on 34. They're all scrapping for those positions behind them. But crucially, all of those uh, teams have a game in hand on Rugby Atalanta, who currently hold the yeah. top spot. So it's, it's a very bunched, it's tight, bunched yeah. thing with only a few games left. Uh, so yeah, very exciting. It's getting towards the business end. It's only getting into its end game now uh, in terms yeah, of a yeah. season dynamic. But uh, yeah, just in terms of games to watch this weekend, we have a few on Saturday that are pretty good. Toronto Arrows versus Rugby United New York. They're both, both good lots teams. Lots of good attacking rugby on show in Toronto. Despite not featuring in the playoffs this year, they are they play fun brand. They're yeah, fun to watch. And Rooney are in the mix. Rooney need every point they can get because they're chase, yeah, yeah. chasing a top spot. So that should be good. Um, Free Jacks v Nola Gold as well both again Stake similar game, yeah. I think that's a conference they're, yeah, they're both yeah, in the same Eastern conference, conference East, yeah. East Conference scrapping for top two um, Old Glory DC versus Rugby Atalanta on Saturday that should be fun as well yeah. just a fun watch and San Diego Legion versus the Gilgronies uh, on Saturday as well that's kind of yeah, our pitch Austin um, have to win that one yeah. um, but yeah all those games available on the rugbynetwork.com for yeah. free on demand highlights however you want to watch really it. professionally brilliant produced service. like brilliant it absolutely service. Yeah, I can't yeah. recommend that website enough because yeah, yeah. it's just you can watch it the day of the day after you can watch highlights uh, if you short prefer. highlights yeah. long highlights all for free yeah, all yeah. there all of the games really well covered got, got good commentary teams none of the same glitchy stuff yeah, you yeah. see occasionally with the rugby Europe okay, championship where the mics are off two issues but <laughs> for the most part it, it is just really well covered and I'm enjoying it I'm enjoying yeah. seeing the fans in America embrace it as well and Absolutely. I just think it's a it's got it's got a high ceiling as far as as far as being a league of intrigue yes the, the, the major league rugby yeah. in the states absolutely so uh, yeah with that we will wrap up club footy and wrap up the show I guess we're going to move on to just our last segment which is the rugby news of the week and uh, yeah there were a few bits obviously it's overshadowed this week by the fact that the Lions are playing that is the news of the week is that the Lions are playing yes, this week indeed, yeah, um, yeah. that's the big news but there are a few other ones obviously Manu Tuolagi got called up for the England squad and has since been released from the England squad due to injury yeah. that is obviously disappointed or disappointing we have uh, a few other squads named Fiji we're naming a squad a 33 yeah, England, man squad Ireland um, yeah. Radradra out of the Fiji squad which kind of sucks that's um, probably courtesy of that injury that yeah, yeah. took in the Premier semi-final um, that's, a, yeah, that's a pretty good one unfortunately yeah. um, the All Blacks uh, named their squad which looks exciting David yeah. Havili poised to take that 12 jersey I think the centres is the real riddle for them for the All Blacks to solve to reach their ceiling yeah. uh, very very exciting to see how Havili and Ioanni combine and I think they should do it straight away I think they should do it against Fiji and possibly even uh, Tonga as well mm-hmm. they should get straight to it and see if that centre partnership works because yeah. it's, a, it's a problem that they have yet to solve and Havili has been brilliant, brilliant. for the Crusaders so in 12 yeah, and, and likewise in. Rico has, yeah, has really awesome. kicked on and hasn't allowed his drop last year to fester he's no, put it behind him put him, he has put it well behind <laughs> yeah, him so yeah, yeah some exciting uh, just squad squad naming and kind of the, the uh, permutations of all of these great players that uh, now have to repatriate and join their <laughs> join their uh, their fellow countrymen and try and play some good footy um, in other news I think we had Lester Hooker was making it was just a bit of uh, headlines because it was Tom Young's this is he, he picked up a, a few match ban um, for an incident that was hilarious it was after the full time whistle in a game between Bristol and Leicester That's a few right, weeks yeah. ago that went way into overtime had all kinds of shenanigans with Pat Lamb and Borthwick on the sideline and John Afoa was he a sub was he a replacement was he injured Jeff Pat Lamb giving it the, oh you bit of tight responsibility if he comes in and gets injured and it's like not only did he not come in and get injured <laughs> he comes in and wins the scrum <laughs> and gets the game and apparently Tom Young said something afterwards that was a bit snarky to the ref and got himself well, 
he said was, like "Can we have a penalty try?" Yeah. And then um, the ref said, uh, like, oh, "Or sorry, you, you, you said uh, something along the lines of you were pushing it there, not giving a penalty try." And the ref said, "Like on which one?" And he said, "All of them." Yeah. And uh, yeah, they, so for that, that was picked up by the mics, and they decided that was worthy of a ban. And um, for the ref, for the ref's part, um, actually, he was saying, um, uh, the, "I can't. I just want to get the name of the bloke because he was basically saying." that there wasn't much in this he was saying he never felt threatened he never even felt disrespected mm. that they, they, like this was just one of those crazy heat of the moment yeah it was, heat, I mean, heat there of the was so much kinda... heat in that moment because yeah, yeah. like you had Borthwick coming down all red in the face mask shouting at the officials as well it felt, feels harsh for yeah, Tom Young's yeah. although it did bring one of the great uh, headlines I've read where an American <laughs> website obviously picked it up and did an old an old sanitised translate so apparently Lester Tiger's prostitute was <laughs> said, said, had it received a ban I did see that that yeah, was, yeah. That was getting me giggling all right <laughs> but uh a bit harsh for Young's obviously he's not missing any lines because he actually had already opted out of that so it's a kind of a it's a nothing ban but it seems a bit harsh after yeah. that um, um, then we also have this uh, bit of news interesting news is that um, the Sharks have picked up uh, this guy Noel McNa- McNamara as a coach this is the Sharks in South Africa as opposed um, to the South African Sharks in England as opposed to the, this yes this is the, the, the Sharks region that, well they have Natal they, they just have two Sharks teams one based in England one based in South yeah. Africa that's fine but the one based in South Africa uh, they picked up um, this guy Noel McNamara who won the Grand Slam with the Ireland under 20s and is a much touted young coach in Ireland mm. and uh, yeah he's going to take a position at the at the Durban team and uh, yeah that'll be very interesting to see obviously yeah. it's a bit a little parochial from our point of view but um, no, I'll, it's I just interesting to see. to see it's not the only coo- like Felix Jones was one that uh, Razzie yeah. grabbed in World Cup here snaffled him up from Munster and brought him with him so yeah, no, there's yeah obviously I'm, I'm the... curious about the Irish coaching uh, diaspora now that's that, that's coaching across the world but McNamara is has like He's a good serious team. credentials and did a really great job with that under 20s yeah. team in other and coaching news we obviously had Gervin released from contract and Gervin Dempsey is now free agent backs coach having been released from Bath so yeah, Bath, he fun, Bath in a funny old position as well. I'd love to see Gerv come right back into the Ireland coaching ticket because I think you need an attacking head uh, in there just to add balance um, yeah. to, to that coaching ticket. Paulie's acquisition was great, but yeah, another yeah. one would I be I think Paulie mining the forwards, Gervin mining the backs. Like old times. Like, like good old, old times. Good old fun. Yeah, uh, yeah that makes yeah. a lot of sense to me, but I'm just spitballing here. Yeah, but Bath, have, are, they're, they're shedding a load of players at the end of this season, so they're kind of at an interesting... It's a weird place because they have yeah, improved. Yeah. There's no, no doubt question. they have yeah, improved yeah. on where they were a few seasons ago. I'll still, I still want them to resurface that pitch in the wreck. The wreck is a lovely ground, but the pitch is rubbish, <laughs> uh, especially around winter time it's just unplayable um, and finally we have some actually um, some big news um, which you see we flipped that on you we did the trivial stuff first and now we're coming at you with the big shit yeah. um, the, the, the laws are to fundamentally change in the game from yeah. August 1st for at least a year they're going to trial the 50-22 and the goal line dropout that's right um, yeah. now both of these rule changes I don't mind right. per- personally I would have I, I don't think it made a well, it made sense in the sense that it was Rugby Australia advocating for the fifty twenty two, but actually the fact that they trialed it in Super Rugby AU was funny because the Aussie teams just didn't use it. Yeah. Um. But uh, it, you know, it, it in the north uh, and in South Africa, there's scope for it to become a huge part of the game. Yeah. Where you can kick the ball from inside your own twenty two and have it bounce and then go out over the halfway line and you get the line out and then kick it from inside your own half and if it goes bounces inside the opposition twenty two, you get the you line also out. get the and line considering out. the kicking both acumen instances. and and just um, kicking tendencies yeah, of a yeah. lot of both domestic and national sides yeah, and yeah. in either South Africa or France or England or Ireland, um yeah, there's a lot of kicking goes on up here. Like you just look, watch an average Pro fourteen game and the amount of kicking that goes on. It would be nice to introduce a fifty twenty two just to get it a bit more pointed yeah well, it's coming and it's it coming, is going to it's coming come august apparently and, yeah. and that's it's going to be very interesting i definitely like the rule change i yeah. understand the logic behind it quality kicking um and then Quite also getting the defense uh, yeah. having having forcing to the, the wingers covered. to mind the backfield such that there then is space as well yeah you know? it's going like, to rock the welsh world yeah. all those defense and welsh be. wingers who just creep and creep and creep have to stay back and, yeah. and cover their space all of that is very interesting but uh, the, yeah, the, the only caveat that I'd add is just that um, the captain's challenge is the one that st- sits in my head as a law variation that was trialed in uh, New Zealand and seemed like just a grand innovation. Like yeah. This is something that's going to you, you know uh, prevent things from being overlooked. And it was used pretty honestly. 
and they trialed it in North and it's just a funny different change in cultures and it destroyed games instantly yeah. because the wily cynical monster uh, mon- well monster <laughs> but also just across really the Celtic nations were just like using it in this cruel tactical way waiting for like a big long sequence where the opposition had the ball and then just asking them to check something like the, the most likely thing from yeah. six or seven rooks back yeah. and, and cue a long t- arduous TMO session to take um, all the yeah. zip and energy out of a game I mean and, yeah, yeah it was used we'll so be with a penalty yeah. to us ha <laughs> ha <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah it has to be abandoned now and while I don't see any specific uh, problems with the fifty twenty two. I just I'm curious to see. I uh, hopefully it works really well yeah. here, but I just I wouldn't have minded seeing them trial it here before spreading it across the game. Sure. But as it is, I think it is. A good I think innovation. it's a good rule. And then yeah. the other one, which is the goal line dropout, I really like that for for a multitude of reasons. I think it's a perfect perfect mm. thing for held up over the try line. In fact, I think it's it's good. I think it should do away with this extra thing, or try to, or slowly do away with this extra thing of just tapping and going instead of setting a set piece and trying to truck over the line for one of the ugliest tries you can see yeah. if you then are inaccurate and get held up the ball's kicked out from from the goal line you don't get to reset with a scrum i think that's a positive change i am all for that however however the caveat i'd attach to that is that i've seen and it seems to be officiated that way in the places they were trialing it that a, a team will just relieve pressure by huffing it long yeah. huffing a loose kick long and it dribbles over the try line and they dot it down and that used to be a 22 which is fair and now it's a goal line dropout yeah, They've been, yeah. you like, don't want I to don't see bad that kicks rewarded bad, yeah. yeah a loose kick like that should be a 22 dropout I wouldn't be getting rid of the 22 dropout I think the goal line dropout yeah. should be specifically for held up over the line yeah I'd love to see some uh, exact clarification on that because uh, when I was originally leading on the, reading about the, the variation as it was initially trialled the only thing that was mentioned was the held up. Yeah. And I was like, okay. That's yeah, fine if it like specifically that. is. But, but then if they start watching the games, practically speaking, oops, as I drop something. Um, <laughs> watching the games, practically speaking, um, it was, um, but geez, I've lost my train of thought. You were, it was, you saw that they were kicking it out from, when, yeah, they, no, when I, that happened. Exactly. They, 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 uh, they touched the ball, when they touched the ball down over the line, as you say, they were just going to the goal line dropout and it seemed, I didn't, I don't, not sure if I ever saw a 22 dropout in games that had the goal line dropout. It seemed to be just the goal line yeah, which is wrong. Yeah, I think so the twenty two is perfect. I'd just for love exactly to see some that. clarification on that. If you yeah. know in the comment, if you're able to clarify in any way, I also um, I do so in a way that doesn't confuse me further. Yes, I think it's not <laughs> yeah. a fair thing if you kick a ball too yeah. far that you that it, you force a goal line drop it. Then I think that's just rewarding loose kicking, which yeah, is yeah. kind of the opposite of what you want from a fifty twenty two injection. Really? And all this, you yeah, want to yeah. kind of get pointed kicks, more attacking, targeted kicks are, are more for. I think things when they dribble too long it goes to your point about uh, they never give the 22 when uh, a, a team knocks it on into the end zone and then the other team grounds the ball that is crazy and then I'm they give a scrum sure. yeah I've seen that <laughs> loads like, of teams if you if you knock the ball on and you're on the opposition line and the ball dribbles over the line and the opposition touches it down then it's a scrum five and I just don't understand why and I've, I've seen a ref say sorry I can't when someone asked for a 22 and I just I don't know what the law is there, but if you if in every other context you get to play an advantage when the opposition team knocks it on, yeah, and well, they've they've brought it over the line and you touch it down, why on earth can you not get a twenty two? I'll never yeah. understand. Advantage you've played, he drops yeah, it down. I touch it it's down. Give me my twenty two. He knocked it on. Twenty two. I'm exiting. Our tight head's already in the sin bin and we're under siege. I don't want a scrum. Yeah, why are yeah. you making me scrum? Yeah, it's yeah. a weird one. It's <laughs> yeah. a weird one. Advantage should count when when the opposition knocks it on. Advantage yeah. should count. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that That's is a, that is a, a total aside, yeah. and that does wrap up the the news of the week. It does law variation come in from August 1st um, yes and they cross the board as you say so it'll be interesting to see the game change for on a trial basis for a year but maybe more uh, more to come because I like the looks of those ru- those rules on paper um, but just one more thing to make mention of as we said at the top of the show congratulations to the Irish Sevens Woo! who triumphed in Monaco beating a very good French team in the final uh, much to the chagrin of the, the fans that were there including Vance on Clerk yay yeah. the first one over any Irish team has got on Vance on Clerk in a while <laughs> um, but uh, yeah no they played absolutely fantastically throughout and uh, they are one of the 12 teams that are going to the set to play sevens of the uh, the Olympics in Tokyo in a few weeks and it's just yeah I'm delighted for them it's a relatively recent project uh, the sevens they were we were in the wilderness kind of famously 
absent yeah, yeah. Uh, and like notable absentees in all these World Seven series until it was uh, Olympic approved, and then there's been a proper concerted effort from all the uh, from the IRFU and from New Sephora to to emphasize this and. In, in some of these, like the team, the way it's put together, you have Jordan Conroy is just a superstar. He's the fastest man I have ever seen in a, in a green jersey in any sport. He He's clocked over 37 kilometres an hour in flight at one point, burning Carl and Isles and the like. And you're like, yeah, he's, clock, he's clocked quick. faster speeds than, than Carl and Isles, than Perry Baker, than uh, Sanatla, than any of them. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he's, he's wildly, wildly talented. And he showed that in the French game when he'd been out of that game in that final for basically the whole first half. And the first bit of scrappy ball that came his way, he just picked it up and ran past the whole French team. Yeah, An absolute superstar in the making. Likewise, Terry Kennedy. I wouldn't yeah. sleep on this Ireland team. Even no. speaking, obviously, as an Ireland fan. But like, Dardis I, kicking, they, they're kicking drop goals team. from yeah, every yeah. angle. Ridiculous drop goaling acumen from, from yeah. Billy Dardis as well. But... Uh, yeah, they're a really well put together bunch and they seem to have a really good team spirit. Obviously, you have guys like Harry McNulty who've been there from the very beginning, Foster Hoare and the same, yeah. but uh, some of the talent they've mined in this, like you saw, they were they were citing it all in their post-match, but Hugo Keenan, who was brilliant for Ireland 15s, he came through the Sevens uh, Academy recently in the Sevens system. So, you know, they've been building for a while and they definitely earned it and they did it the hard way by beating France in a in Monaco which was effectively a French home yes, game yes indeed and there were plenty of it was a partisan enough crowd, crowd so it was, it was a remarkable achievement and I'm definitely we're, we're just proud of the lads yeah. and it was a, yeah for, against all the odds and, and even as you say the RFU have put their time and energy into it but they're still you know not particularly well played no. and a lot of them have their own stuff going on there's a couple of guys from academies who get in that was where Keenan came from yeah. like he was still contracted by Leinster but for the most part, they make like a bit of money, but not not, not enough, not not a huge amount, and yeah. not enough. And and to see the talent come through, and yeah. the guys almost in a GAA like way, yeah. just doing it for the love of the game, and mixing it with the very best teams in the business is just mm. brilliant to see. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm delighted yeah. and. and Totally proud of totally the team. Yeah. And we're going to have a great uh, Olympic uh, tournament in, in the Sevens. There's a lot of it's a stacked tournament. You yeah. know, you look at uh, the Blitz box, I think they're going to be coming with it. They're going to be a force to be reckoned with. Obviously, Fiji looking to pick up another gold yeah, medal. Defend their gold uh, medal. You have the, yeah. key, the New Zealand, uh, Australia, things, Australia have a great Australia. team. Ar- Argentina, great Argentina, not so good generally, but come World Cups and come Olympics, <laughs> I never write off the Argentinians. Uh, I, great Britain. I mean, Great Britain, Kenya be, are there. I think, yeah, as well. great, that's going to be yeah, it's going to be mouth watering. And obviously, you have the hosts, Japan as well. Yeah, and I think South Korea. South Korea randomly, randomly got in um, there. Uh, good luck to them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they, they, they'll probably they need it in rock such the world. a stacked yeah, division. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah, it's going to be very exciting as it was the first time round. It's just it's a great sport, and uh, yeah, at the, at the Olympic Games fantastic I'm, I'm so proud chuffed for the Irish lads it's the biggest achievement in Irish Sevens history relatively short though it may yeah. be and uh, yeah I'm excited to see them light it up but as you say the ceiling is so high Conroy's as fast as any of them Ter- Kennedy's as good a guy a go- as good a rugby player as any of them yeah, yeah. Dardis they is need good to, rugby. They, like, they need, need to, get to the deliver re- get the restarts right and control possession that's the key they're, yeah. they're quite a, root, a, a structured team they are and they, can't, they, they won't survive in the loose waters if, the, if, 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 if they if, give if, the likes of Fiji just too much ball yeah they, they have to really starve get, Fiji of the ball. That's the tactics. But anyway, we're, we're getting into the weeds there. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a decent note to end the show on. I think um, so too. It was definitely fun being back. This was really just a, a, a check back in. Yeah. Uh, just doing our, our, our minding our P's and Q's as far as all the rugby we'd been covering. A little season review. Also, at the beginning of the show, we were looking ahead to that Lions and we we're looking ahead to the summer series, which is what we will be doing in oh, the weeks week. to come. We're going to be reflecting on the Lions games, talking about how their preparation for the test series is going, building up, of course, uh, to the series, which obviously takes place next month, which is very, very exciting very for exciting, us. Absolutely. And as, as always, if you do enjoy our particular form of long form rugby chatter, please do feel free to leave a like and subscribe. You can t- hit the bell button to know, be notified when we upload. Um, and also, yeah, drop a comment down below because we do love the bit of discourse. We love getting fans from different communities, fans from different uh, yeah. backgrounds, all conversing in the comments thread. And uh, yeah, yeah, all, all that stuff helps the channel as well and helps yeah. us get a, 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 as broad a base as possible, which is what we like. We love we love bringing an amalgamation of all the communities of rugby together just mm-hmm. to chat on our on our love of the game. And and if you do have any theories, any any questions, if you want to illuminate us on any of the stuff we said, if anything was wrong do get into the comment section section and don't be afraid to, to get in and chat because we'll, we'll respond and we'll have a we'll have a good back and forth which is really what we what we do love about uh, about what we do absolutely chatting about rugby it's chatting why we started rugby. doing this and that's why we're still doing it today yeah indeed we're we rolling on towards 100 we're rolling on towards 2k yeah, yeah. 
all with your help and support. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, with that, we were going to sign this one off, and we will see you next week, guys. Ciao. See you then. Bye-bye. Oh, I have to sit up now. Bold throw of the new season. <laughs> the new season. Ash, we just took a little mid-season hiatus. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, oh, it's an overthrow. I was so focused on the angle. And it was... And it's an underthrow. <sighs>